should be starting momentarily. Yeah. Uh, we. I think we're live now. You think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might have to send. Um. Oh wait, no, we're good. Okay. Wait. Uh, chat. Okay, let, we're good. Let us we're know. Good. Yeah, we're, we're, good. we're good. We're good. They see I can us. See it. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, they see us. Um. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank you. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, what are so? Okay. What are we doing here, Chuck? <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off. Yeah. So that I can focus. Do you <laughs> need the headset on? Uh, no. Okay. All right. We'll we'll be able to, we'll be able yeah. to figure this out. So, um, we're like so not used to like um latency and delays and like we're used to just like going live and playing everything through a speaker like behind us and tonight we're trying um obs um the streaming for, software yeah the, the streaming software so first things first um mason and i uh want to thank uh salem valentine um for helping us like not just last minute but in preparation for all of this yep um that's they, uh asteriums in yes the chat they they are an incredible uh force to be reckoned with in terms of the um knowledge uh that is needed to do streams properly <laughs> we just don't have that knowledge um so um yeah uh thank you so much salem uh uh we really appreciate you um so tonight we're going to be discussing um some absent moon stuff lore um we're gonna be um essentially talking about uh what each piece means we're gonna be taking you guys and gals and everybody in between through the story of uh absent moon which covers um what what did we say it's like um what's the timeline uh it's like it's, like, it's about yeah, a decade. Yeah, 10, uh, 10 yeah, to 15 we're, we're years. Yeah, we're doing a little time skip. Um, yeah. It's roughly 10 years um, between uh, Hylix 2 and Hylix 3. Yes. Uh, so we're, um, yeah, we're we're just really, really stoked um, to, to, I was like, what's on my phone? It's us. It's, yeah, I, I have yeah. to, I have to have the stream up so that we oh, can, yeah. so that we can hear what's going on. So yeah. um, we're going to listen to each song together. Um, as a community, we have all the songs set up. Um, I'll talk about um, uh, I'll talk about like some stuff that was happening. Um, first things first, uh, you know, after after the first first things first and the second first things first. Um, I just wanted to kind of give uh, some insight into um, what uh, what was going on um, before uh, we made. Uh, absent moon and i say we um as in you know i wrote all this stuff and mason was so like you know dude just like mason was just so gracious in letting me kind of like expand a little bit um in terms of uh creativity on this piece specifically um yeah <laughs> like trying to move it's like <laughs> so yeah. it's it's um it's been it's been really um it, it, it was such a privilege to to be able to write this music in this way um so uh a while ago now prob i would even say like close to two summers ago i had a discussion with mason about um the possibility of writing more stuff that sounded like moon age lobotomy um so we were talking about uh like well, maybe we should do like a second Moon Age lobotomy thing, uh, where instead of it being weird rock tunes, it was more like campfire, like folky stuff. And I was gonna like have it be like folk music that you hear on the outskirts of like New Moldul from like you know several weird um, troubadours and whatnot. Um, and I thought about it, and then time passed, and. Um, you know, like, it was just, like, something that I, I wasn't thinking about doing. Now, in this time, um, you know, we had already kind of established that we wanted to make Hylix 3. Um, I started making 
I think I started making music for Hilux 3 like a while ago. Like I want to say like two and a half to three years ago yeah. I started producing stuff for time, Hilux 3. Time passes. Time, yeah, time really does pass. Um, so uh, essentially like, you know, time as, as time passes, um, things change in your life. Um, and I won't get into um, like nitty gritty details if like you're, you know, if you know me, um, or if you've spoken to me or been in like, you know, um, spaces that I inhabit a lot, like um, the Hilux fan server, or like if you've ever hit me up in a DM or whatever, um, you'll, you know, like for anybody that doesn't know, um, Absent Moon is a direct product of me trying to like process, um, you know, like a, a really uh, big unfortunate thing that happened. Um, it was just like, a, I won't go into the details, but it was like a personal tragedy that my wife and I had suffered. And um, we sort of just like, you know, had to get through it. And um, I talked with Mason after walking out of um, Hades Town, the musical, in, um, in like, you know, New York. Like, my wife uh, got me tickets to see Hades Town on Broadway. Um, we went to see it, and I walked out, and I thought, um, oh, you know, like, well, why, why don't I do that? You know, like, why, why can't I do that? And I thought, oh, well, I don't really have a platform for it. You know, like, I, like I, I don't know what I'd write a musical about. And we were about 10 steps out the door from the, from the musical. And I said, oh, wait, yeah, I do have a platform for this. Okay, let me text Mason. So I texted him and, you know, Mason obviously like knew what was going on with everything. And he was just like, yeah, I think you should do it. Like just so supportive, just like the best like friend ever, you know, in, in such like a, you know, miserable, just a miserable time. And, um, I immediately got to work. I uh, wrote. Yeah. Chuck, uh, Chuck had like, uh, so much excitement. Um, I'm after seeing Hades town, yeah. um, uh, so I was excited about the, about his uh, vision for the project, but it was also like I cannot like hold back this energy that, yeah, that Chuck like I was like I was has. stoked, but like it it was it was different. There was this whole process of like you know like obviously like there my my status mentally was like I needed to be making something, and I th I want to I want to believe that like you were you know like aware of that. But also it was like, yeah, I was really excited. I was really stoked to do this thing. And so um, every step of the way, every song that I made over the course of 30 days, I did all of the instrumentals. And right on like the night before I was going to record, I had it in my schedule that I was going to record the vocals. I had gotten this horrible like respiratory infection that ended up, you know, with I had like a fungal infection on my vocal cords and it was messed up. And I was like, oh, man, like I can I cannot. Like I, yeah. like I can't I can't sing this right now. It was now. like a dark time. I think you were like, is this it for my singing? Yeah, it was bad. I couldn't get my voice my voice to engage at one point and I thought like is it, is it over for me? Am I cooked? Yeah. Um it was really bad. Um but uh I was able to to bounce back and the the moment that my vocals were good, I immediately uh got to singing. Um I got uh Vinny from Vine Sauce into the studio. Um, he sang uh, for um, he sang basically the part of Wayne on the record. Um, my wife sang some key parts, um, which we'll talk about. But um, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into the the very first um, song. We're gonna listen to it. Um, I'll go over uh, some lyrics. I'll go over what everything means. Um, in terms of questions. Um, everybody's like going like 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 a mile a minute with the stream um <laughs> if we see them we're gonna do a q and a section um at the end so if you have any questions specifically um please write them down we're hoping that we will um answer your questions along the way so if we do answer your questions along the way and you're keeping your list just cross it out if we answer the question that way we can you know keep keep the stream and keep like you know the ecosystem of the stream moving um so we're gonna get started with the first piece um 
which is uh, the champion of ennui, and it's how our story of Absent Moon opens. All right. All right, I'm ready.
Okay. All right. So, um, the song just ended for me just now. I'm not sure how bad the latency is. Um, but oh, I guess it's, I'm on the same I'm on the same latency as everybody else. So, um, some some things to talk about. Um, in the beginning, which is actually in the end of the second game, we see Wayne um, sort of like you know like they defeat. They defeat Gibby, and where do they go? They, they don't go back home. They, they go and they do the concert, right? And the concert is super fun and super goofy and interactive. And then you leave the concert, and you seemingly just, like, end up in the middle of nowhere with this random pedestal and button, and Wayne presses the button, and the hands come down and, and grab him. And so I kind of wanted to, like, come up with this this, like you know, nod to that, like, will your hands pull me away into the pastel sky? Well, who, who's you? Um, my interpretation has always been that, like, you know, it was either Wayne asking for somebody, anybody, to pull him out of, you know, this, this existence that he has found himself in. Um, but my other interpretation uh, has been that it is physically mason because of the color of the gloves at the end of the game which i i always thought was kind of neat so we we talked about it and it you kind of said that it's like a like a meta moment anyway um i think by the time we're in that um scene in the game the concert scene um it's uh um how can i put it it's getting into this kind of um Un, unreal logic like the ending movie where the wayne toothpaste and the, the wayne, wayne plane airplane um like it's not it's not like literally they've fallen into this concert and wayne's pushing a giant button um uh it, it's more symbolic uh and um it's like it's also like a treat for the players you know like we've yeah, already experienced yeah. the end of the yeah game. it's getting yeah. into kind of like you know you beat like the Super Mario game, and you get like the review of all the the enemies and stuff, the credits. You know? Yes. Um. um, and so I found that you know, like it, since we're in like a meta sort of like you know un unreal state, that perhaps this is this is just a personification of of Wayne being taken by these hands. This is a personification of of the one thing that Wayne wants, and it's not to have to make a decision about leaving his friends and leaving, you know, like the, the world of Hylix, um, but just like being taken out, you know, just yeah. literally like having, like, I don't want to make a decision anymore because I've had to, like, I've had to save the world twice. I just don't want to do this anymore. And it sort of follows this idea of, um, of like the, I want, or the rather I don't want um, formula of like a, a musical theater piece. It's a really common um, musical theater trope where like you write a piece of music and the main character is just like, I, I want to do this thing. I want to be where the people are, right? Like, you know, it's mm. got it's got this whole, wow. it's like Wayne's Little Mermaid, you know, moment. And now everyone's going to make Little Mermaid Wayne crossover bullshit and it's going to be great. Yeah, it, It's a dream come true. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, essentially we we have this this like really kind of heavy, more emotional moment, and Wayne is not a typically emotional person, or or being rather. Um, what does Wayne want to do? Like in general, like what is Wayne's personality? Like we can we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, that is a great question, Chuck. Uh, Wayne Wayne does need some kind of hobby. Yeah, um, I feel like Wayne there are would... a lot of there are a lot of threads that are you know going to be followed yeah. in Hylix Three. Uh, Wayne's hobby could be another one. I, I feel um, like he wants to just like chill. Like he wants to he he like he's kind of like like he's the type of guy that wants to sit and watch TV. You know, he mm. doesn't want to like you know he's imagine having to save the world like like Hylix One starts out. It's like oh no, Gibby's bad. Yeah. We gotta um, do. We yeah. gotta do something about it. Yeah, we talked about um, like, why is why would Wayne have uh, you know, why would he be in this headspace where he'd want to leave? Um, um, and the the idea was that um, Wayne has kind of taken on some extraordinary 
uh, measures to defeat Gibby uh, in Hylix 2. It's clear that there are like many Waynes. There are Wayne clones. Uh, old Wayne is has like morphed into this unhuman so, creature. So can we address who Old Wayne is? Are we ready? Uh, yeah, we could. Um, the, I mean, you know, a lot of this, you know, we're 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 picking up threads and following. Them. Uh, yeah. we, we're we're ready to uh, to declare that old Wayne is Wayne from Hylix One. Yes, we can, yeah, you know, Wayne Wayne from Hylix One. We can settle has, that. Has morphed into old, old Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, he's uh, you know, what I love so much about that line is like maybe if you live long enough. As I have, you will become old Wayne. Yeah, and, and now, like, now you know, yeah. now, now it's like official, and I'm gonna yeah. have to like. Yeah, you're gonna have to. That's, I'm gonna have to work that back into the, <laughs> like the lore, like oh, you know what? Yeah. What is that gonna so affect? Um, uh, so and uh, the Wayne's consciousness. Um, this is the, we were yeah. we were thinking about this as well. Um, uh, Wayne has um, in Hylix two. It's like there's the the primary Wayne that you're playing as, or um, Wayne Prime. Yeah, um, and then the the other Waynes, they're not yet like a separate, they're not separate individuals. They're like kind of gradations of Wayne's consciousness uh, at that point. Um, this takes a, a mental toll on Wayne, um, maintaining all this, um, and, you know, being, uh, slain and resurrected and, uh, then like kind of taking over a new Wayne vessel. Um, so by the end of Hylix 2, um, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, it's, I, I like to maintain a certain level of relaxation, uh, when discussing Wayne, so we'll say he, he needs a break, you know. Um, yeah, he's he's been he badly needs a break, um, and the uh, once he's left, uh, then the the remaining Wayne vessels begin to um, develop their own individuality. Um, their forms begin to mutate. Uh, yeah, Wayne I, in, individuality, ideology. You know, all sorts of weird things because what like you you don't go home as as Wayne Prime um in Hylix two. You you just you you leave. Um and therefore the knowledge of oh Gib Gibby Gibby has been slain was never passed to the other Waynes. Um and without that knowledge they're just left to their own devices. And I mean like they're doing barrel rolls and you know all sorts of other cool kung fu moves on the uh, on the front lawn. So like, there's there's no telling what is gonna happen. Um, so um, that the Wayne we play as in House Two is technically the H One Wayne personality wise, but yeah, I mean because like Wayne Wayne itself is like like the the um, the species of Wayne has like a temperament, just like you know like cats have catitude or you know like some small dogs are like you know. Uh, have like the Napoleon complex, like like a Chihuahua might like you know be an angry little you know butthead of a dog. Um, Wayne himself is like you know uh, like has a specific temperament, uh, you could say, um, and that temperament is chilled out. Um, um, and yeah, I want to briefly note. I, I'm loving all the uh, the questions here yes. in the, the chat. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna touch upon that. Uh, um, you know. Um, I'm the author. So there's a certain, you know, so I am making this up as I go along. Um, and the, the games, but the games are getting a little, at least, you know, the plan is that they're getting, <laughs> they're getting more coherent. Um, the uh, first game was extremely improvised. The second game, I was picking up threads from the first. Uh, and then the third game um, is going to be even more so. Uh, I've got uh, much, much more of a vision for the ending in mind. Um, so... The sources that yeah. I just made it up. Yeah, yeah, but the, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The sources that I made it up. Uh, so you know, some of the I'm I'm writing down some of these questions. Yeah, yeah. And I still got to resolve. These are these are good. Ones. Someone's um, asking when Hylix Five is. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, Hylix Five, the search for three and four. Um, so some things that I wanted to touch upon before we move on to the next song. Um, this and of course, like after this stream, if you have any questions at all, please, please send me a DM. Um, make a comment, 
uh, start start like a comment thread or whatever on Twitter. We'd be happy to jump in. If Twitter's not your spot, like if, if you want to get off of Twitter and you want to uh, you know start a conversation um, on uh, on Blue Sky, we're there too. Um, we're we're in most spaces. Um, um, also, the the chat has called out the paradox of if old why is old Wayne not Wayne Prime. <laughs> oh well i mean you know old old wayne is literally like you know he's he's too old to do adventurous shit hmm. he's he's a he's like a weird eldritch demon thing do you do you, like we can't go on the adventure as old wayne we have to go on the adventure as the the wayne prime of hylix 2 and for all we know the wayne prime from hylix 2 is a more evolved um and more capable version of wayne um Old Wayne is kind of like this eldritch, you know, horrific, you know, nightmare that's just living delightful, on top of your house. Just, just, yeah, just a, just a terrible, you know, delightful, kind. like, little, little man. Kind, sagely, <laughs> gurgling, and, you know, just kind of consistently yeah, drooling. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, you know, yeah, he got too chill and he became Old Wayne. Yeah. So, some things that I wanted to say. Um, Vinny, I don't know if you're watching right now or if you're gonna watch later, but I love the shit out of you, man. Um... Vinny came in and he was just the absolute best. It was the most fun. Um, we love going to each other's studios. Um, I've been uh, to the Red Room to go and record stuff for Red Vox. It's super great. Um, and it's a very chilled out space. Vinny has come here twice to do some recordings. Once for Absent Moon and more recently he was down here for uh, my personal project In Plain Sight. He sounds amazing. Um, the track that he's on is actually a track that I wrote specifically for Vinny and Mason. Um, so, you know, like we're letting the good times roll. Um, so uh, some some uh, things uh, that I wanted to talk about. Um, the voices that you hear, um, Vinny is supposed to be uh, Wayne Prime. Um, and then uh, you have like the group of Waynes singing um, in the background, the chorus of Waynes. There are three Waynes, which are me, and then I wanted to pay homage to the fact that the fact that people liked the feminine variant of Wayne, or what people lovingly have referred to as a decorous. Um, my wife is one of the Waynes, um, so we threw a decorous in there. Um, so that's like what all the what have I become. Um, you know, uh, we have like references to evolution unchecked and uncontested. You know, Wayne is aware that things are changing. Wayne is aware that things are going nuts, and that's why he doesn't want to be around. Um, he's like, I, you know, if if I'm if I'm not around, the the big part is obviously the bridge. Um, I. If it weren't for you, my friends, my sliver of hope in this world, sliver like a, the sliver of the moon, haha, um, it would all come crashing in if my story was ever told. So if anybody ever really delved into what Wayne as a species is, um, it it would like you know, it would essentially destroy the the, the fabric of reality. Like Wayne, Wayne has been living in this ticking time bomb of an endless cycle, which is what I wanted to kind of open up on. It's like, here's the problem, and here's how the problem is going to expand. Um, is it ever really me? That's like the big moment. Um, Wayne is finally realizing that like, well, if old Wayne is an older version of me from Hylix 1 or whatever, like then who, who, the, who, the, who the heck am I? Like what, like what, what is my purpose? If I'm program, if I wake up, and I have been learning Kung Fu on my front lawn just to, you know, defeat enemies and horrid, wretched things that are trying to destroy the world, then what is my purpose? I just want to chill and watch TV. I don't want to do anything. So it's really just like, it's very up, up for interpretation. Like if you're, if you have like a headcanon of like Wayne just wants to sit and play guitar all day or Wayne wants to go and, and play golf or whatever, like that's totally fine. Whatever it is that you believe Wayne is doing, that's probably what he's doing. You know, he just doesn't want to do the thing that we have been controlling him to do as the player. He doesn't want to be a part of it. He wants to be taken out of the story. I think, you know, there's room for, like, in addition to watching TV and hanging out, like, uh, 
you know, uh, he could be doing some, you know, some high level like um, electronic, uh, you know, genius moon. Yeah, deity that's stuff. that's fine. Um, um, there's that there's that tension between like total goofiness and uh, the the language of the song. The language of the song changes too. In Hylix. Um we we have an evolution. We have an evolution um, in the in the seven eight section. There's a lot of tension uh, when the seven eight sections come back. What have I become? Turns into what could I have been? Turns into uh, what will I become? So we have some foreshadowing of like what what is to come. You know, like it's a lot of what if. So with that being said, we're gonna go to the next track. Uh, now we know what's going on with Wayne. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want to be a part of, uh, you know, the the what's been going on in his world anymore. And so he leaves. We have to establish as well. He leaves. He's not dead. He hasn't been. You know, like like the, there's. He just. We just don't know where Wayne went. Wayne leaves. It's like if I got in my car right now and left. And it's like, where did Chuck go? Where did Wayne go? We don't know. He just left. Wayne Machine Broken. Understandable. Have a nice day. All right. The next track is The Promethean's Lament. People really liked this one, and I'm really happy that they did because this was such a goofy one. Hmm. You want me to hit the button on that? Um, yeah, yeah.
so back. <laughs> the back one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, it's it's pretty obvious that everybody really likes that song. Um, that song was super fun. Um, I. Um, do you like text-based sing-along? Um, I mean, like, yeah, who doesn't? Um, so, I think, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do uh, was follow the... Um, it's Otis Over. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that I wanted to do was really um, get into this idea of, like, when you write a record... Track two needs to be absolutely like like it needs to be the banger of the record. But being that I was so overcome with grief and all of this craziness in my life, I I was just like, I'm gonna make every song the best possible song that I can. And so this song came out and all of these songs I wrote chronologically too. So this was actually track two that I wrote, um, for, for the record. And it was, um, it was really fun. I remember once I was ready to sing the vocals, I said to Mason, I was like, can I give Oda's ear more of like a, an operatic voice and then like corrupt it with like, you know, some, some, uh, chorus and tons of reverb and stuff and make, make him sound like an alien, you know, whatever. And, um, Mason may, Mason, uh, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a Mason impression incoming. Uh, the only thing that Mason said to me on the phone was, I like opera. <laughs> and I was just like, cool, all right, great. So it's settled. Odazir is going to have this operatic voice, um, which was super fun for me because I don't ever get to sing like that on my records. I have to sing like with a with a rock voice or with a pop voice or with something a little bit different and this was just nice to kind of like go back to what i went to school for and you know kind of mess around with it a little bit more and sing it a little bit more comedically as well um so why is otis what is otis ear singing about um well uh somebody said this in the beginning oh the gibby light motif perfect in that moment, when you hear the Gibby leitmotif, we see Odazir making something very, very special. And what is the thing that he's making? Uh, yeah. Um, so you know, with with Wayne, um, uh, no longer the uh, main protagonist of uh, Hylix Three. Um, I I was sketch, you know, sketching um concepts for the new protagonist um just picking up threads from the previous games uh and the one i kind of settled on was a um taking the the oda's ear head shape um and uh, some of the you know some of the concepts i've posted on twitter i'm gonna share a few more uh, i think this is the first one i drew um just a little sketch um um another uh, lying down on the beach um uh hold on there are more incoming um you know just just a bunch of different um variants uh hold on I, Yo, that I, one that one's super cool on the on the right the you know different hair um diff, like melting concepts um here the protagonist is turning into a little cloud um uh studies of the you know studies of the the flip-flops uh how that's gonna work out um you know <laughs> um, <laughs> goofy little wayne t-shirt um yeah yeah it's number one wayne fan. yeah 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 um so cool uh so um so yeah um Odazir has uh, created this kind of um, this homunculus, uh, his, his progeny, his uh, yeah. his child, yeah. um, 
and it's not it's not just told in like you know in in one light motif like so the the light motif that I want you to listen for is that um, let me see if I can sing it it's like a that's the new light motif for the new character um, which shows up quite a bit um, you know uh, you'll you'll hear it again later but um, just remember that and then. The reason why we hear the the Gibby light motif in the beginning of the song is because yeah, Odazir is like talking about how you know oh I tried to resurrect Gibby and it didn't really work, but that's what happens when you um, that's what happens when you know fortune favors the brave. You know we we wanted to we wanted to try something and it didn't work. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna make Gibby a dog now. <laughs> So we have we have uh, a Gibby dog, uh, which people are really going to just lose their fucking minds about um, my one F-bomb for the video so far. I think I don't think I've I don't think I've dropped it at yeah, all. You've been restrained um, this yeah, time. Yeah, I've been, um, I've been, yeah. 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 So in addition to the Wayne mutants, uh, there's going to be some. Or Wayne variants, uh, Chuck prefers. Uh, I, well, I mean, uh, there's, there's going to be yeah. some some Gibby variants. It's like another um, giving another perspective on the characters. Um, they're not like out of the picture, um, but we're seeing them from a different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, perspective. Um, uh, one of those. I had like a. <laughs> this is oh, one of the, yeah, one of the yeah. Gibby mutants. And um, I oh, think that's a Gibby mutant. Yeah, it's got the little the little mohawk. That's thing. so, dude! I didn't even recognize yeah. that. That's so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, that one I had a whole three D uh, animation of. Yeah, that has that back. has like a really that has a cool um, song attached to it too. Yeah, I've been nice. I've been cooking on like concepts for the game for like some two and since and the years? First, since the second game came out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, I think the so the and the Gibby mutants they're a little like the Waynes are more of a force of nature, um, mm. but um, the uh, society, the civilization, they have some uh, Gibby mutants that they've harnessed or created. Um, yeah. Odazir is a part of this process using his you know mystical knowledge to uh, and and we get some, also get some Gibby servants. We also notice, like, um, so all of, like, the shuffling around that you hear in the song, like, all of the stomping. How do you pronounce the, the name of those characters? The little bunny-headed dudes? I mean, that that one was just... Uh, it, I think that one's... I, I don't know. I, I don't really pronounce that one in my head. It's like Sawaplit so, or something. Yeah, it's... A, it's do, so, <laughs> give me... Um, I don't uh, even remember how it's called. Odysseus minions are kind of, like, doing his, his bidding... Um, at the at that moment in the song, um, now he's like a a he hasn't yet become like a melting the, mess. Uh, and their their working name for those was like Bunny Man because they have the, they have the ears. Yeah, so that's like that's what's in my my brain. God, God damn. <laughs> I see I see Gibbity Toilet. Jesus Christ, God damn it. we've truly made it. Um, but you know, like um, this this concept of of like Odazir being this like un you know this this grand you know uh, master uh, of of like you know homunculi and you know has control over all these people like he's he's just like a, a guy that has has some serious knowledge so we have not yet gotten far enough into the future where he has become like a blubbering mess but just be aware that over time when you make when you have like weird experiments and you're exposing yourself to weird chemicals and all sorts of you know natural things that we don't really have like mason and i really don't know the the idea behind what makes the world of hylix the world of hylix is is very much unknown to the both of us but you know when something is you, like, hey, you shouldn't really touch that over a period of time. Like, you shouldn't expose yourself. Yeah. To also, that. the uh, <laughs> you know the, the the combat with uh, with Wayne and the crew uh, uh, caused some wear and tear on Odysseus. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he you was, know he came he came that, he so. came back uh, he came back like you know he's partially he's, restored. He's yeah you know so um 
we have like you know this this probably again the bridge it saves it saves it for like you know i wanted to give him like a really cool you know like dignified kind of like the, people are referring to it as the disney villain theme which is like oh yeah like i'm a disney guy for for real i'm not like a scary disney adult but i do love disney i think disney musicians are fantastic I, um, i've never been to uh a disney park so I've, we're gonna yeah we're gonna go one day we're out. gonna we're gonna take you to disney world oh, one okay. day with the family and yeah. it's just gonna be it's gonna be hilarious um but you know i wanted to give like that build up of like you know hit, the bridge is so um you know um let's let's go through the verses really quick resurrected the fallen moon verbal chaos when all were attuned so he's talking about the first time that gibby reigned and how like how awesome that was um absurdity was our redemption but failure leads to new inventions okay cool um then uh we have that rap section the second verse i was convinced that i had achieved a perfect design grotesque and pristine he's talking about gibby in hylix 2 the reconstituted version of gibby um reconstitution rebirth having bathed in the terrestrial juice my concept finally had some proof hell yeah dude I, I was having, I was cooking. I had such a fun time writing these lyrics until I got to the bridge and I was like, what is the bridge going to be? And I just wanted it to be scary, sing, ominous, single words. So he's saying, listen, learn, adapt, fortify. Those are all positive things. And then very quickly, it turns into unleash, attack, overpower, destroy. So he's sort of unbalanced in what he wants for the future, what he wants for his child, what he wants for his, his progeny. Um, his new homunculus, his new project, his pride and joy. We, we don't know what uh, the future holds, but we do know that this is the song where he is cooking up the, he's physically cooking up the protagonist. Um, the protagonist is being like, you know, created in a cauldron or something or yeah. test tube. Yeah. yeah. So super cool. Um, next track. Uh, way back home. Yeah, the way back home. Yep. The way back home was dark and unknown. She walked it alone in search of who she was. For many years she lived with the earth, and like the thing.
All right. <laughs> yeah, I I really I really appreciate the comments on that one. We we we're having a ball reading the comments and laughing and talking. Um, so, uh, Samsnosa, um, never, ever, ever the, uh, playing the part of like the damsel in distress, um, but can, can experience like, you know, has the, the, uh, the capability of experiencing, uh, stress, um, because, you know, like things are different. Um, so Wayne leaves. Um, we fast forward a little bit to Oda's ear and then we fast forward a little bit more to, um, uh, you know, Sam Snosa kind of just like, I, I wanted to treat this as like a montage. Someone said that it's like giving off eighties ballad vibes. Yes, absolutely. Like a hundred percent. This is, this is like, that's what I, um, what I was going for. Kind of like, a you know, like a Brian Adams sort of, uh, thing. Um, so being that I didn't want to sing as Samsnosa and at the time I didn't want to force my wife, um, to sing something that, uh, she wasn't a hundred percent comfortable with, um, shout out to my wife, Diane, uh, you sound beautiful on everything that you sing, uh, including this thing. Um, basically, uh, I wanted to figure out a way that I could sing about Samsnosa and, I kind of had this idea of like Dracula, like singing like in a giant like dark room, like even if like a like a roller rink with a disco ball, you know. Like I just wanted to have that like moment, and I wanted to be the voice of Dracula. So what you're hearing on there is like me in my purest form. Like that's what it would sound like if I was singing like on any one of my pieces, um, my personal pieces. Uh, so. You know, we hear uh, we hear Dracula describing the, this this story as it unfolds um, for um, for some Snosa. Um, the way back home was dark and unknown. She walked it alone in search of who she was. So, um, some Snosa is experiencing this. Um, you know, she's like a she's like a. a a, a person or, or like a, a creature we we want to say that some snows is more humanoid than the other yeah. characters yeah. we're a little she, close oh sure sure she's got um some Snosa has more human features than the other characters do which kind of makes her um an outlier she's also the the um uh only like di like decidedly female character in in the crew um and i think um What's important to understand is that, you know, she, uh, she's kind of like experienced a lot in the past. We, we don't ever see anybody like her, um, throughout the games. Samsonos is the only one. And she seems to have this kind of like, you know, uh, hidden knowledge about the world, about the land, about how things work with the juice. Um, maybe she's got some knowledge about how the, um, the, the xylem works. Um, or the Hylum, rather. Um, and so, one thing that I was hoping people would pick up on, and it's like, oh, it's like this cool leitmotif from Moon Age Lobotomy. Her, her leitmotif is the first, it's the first five notes that you hear in Look Ma, I Fly Now, when you're up on the Hylum Xylem at the end of Hylix 2. That's what you hear. And so it's like, whoa, whoa, why is that theme there? Why is that? T uh, tied to Samsnosa. So what I wanted to do is assign her this leitmotif that I am, you know, kind of like more formally referring to as, you know, the, the motif of like the ancient world, the ancient land. Um, not like the ancients, like some Anunnaki bullshit or anything like that, but like people, like an older era. And she has the knowledge of, of such things. So, She's, she's kind of like, you know, skulking around, do, doing her thing with, with the planet, and she starts finding signs and, you know, um, may, maybe like indications that there are, there are other people out there um, that might be like her or might be living like her similarly. Um, 
we have the pre-chorus, the first pre-chorus. She didn't want to heed the call coming from beyond her walls, not physical walls, but the walls that she has put around herself to, to harden her herself to go on, um, to exist. Um, then we have um, verse 1, um, an innocent child when the nightmare began of ambulant skulls car carving pads in the land. So we make reference to the fact that like her people or like at least her family were slaughtered by the ambulant skulls. And that's why we have... I mean, these are some threads we're kind of... Yeah. Um, developing further. It's not like explicit in the game. Right, um, right. It's, but, but like this is the, the story, like how we're interpreting it yeah um so um not to get like disney princess like hearing a melody you know on the air or whatever but like maybe you know just like hearing hearing something or feeling something deep within um that's calling her um you know love the uh you know wanderer uh the story is a slow burn you know like like your story burns slowly we meet sam snosa before any other characters in Hylix, because Samsnosa has that game, Samsnosa. Oh well, <laughs> it's like, no. it's like I was, I was sort of like, I don't want to, I don't want to tie it. them yeah. in, you know, like I don't want to officially loop Sam Samsnosa in, but at yeah. least the design, the concept that a character might be reoccurring, I wanted to make reference to the fact that Samsnosa has been around at least in mm. Mason's head for a yeah. long time. I'm always, I'm always fantasizing about like. Uh, polishing those like <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the slow burn have yeah. finished early games um hasn't happened yet <laughs> yeah so um then like uh we get into verse two. Oh yeah warrior azure is the memory um endlessly searching to find your way back home i wanted to make reference to like the the you know like what her theme is um okay so with crown of bone and cape burning red goodbyes left unsaid she left it all behind really sad moment friendships made decayed one by one and as she presumed they plagued her restless mind but in time she is gonna go and search for the call um i mean yeah. also like um after hylix 2 and kind of during that um some snows is not like um doing badly uh, yeah like she, she, she's, she's got the the juice ranch set up she's chilling um, yeah she's she's she's, she's chilling yeah she's like but there are like you know like i don't know like she's thinking about her she's thinking about her homies yeah you know? yeah and um, then and she's then, like she has kind of space now to with the uh you know give these uh bullshit <laughs> um, <laughs> dealt with uh she has space now to um look into the um she's playing golf yeah, yeah that's like that's like a really good representation of like she has so much time that she could play golf yeah right yeah. so um then we have like wanderer your story burns slowly but you aren't the only one right like we we have that line again warriors yours the memory they never stopped calling to guide your way back home then we have that big right so that's like the warrior theme from that's a big stick that's like the that's like the you know we've conquered the we've conquered the greatest battle of all we've yeah. we've fought the greatest battle sam snows has fought the greatest battle and it's to it's to be up to the task of going out and finding what yeah. is going on out in the world i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna toss up some of my like sure, sure. Snows, uh, outfit concept scribbles and and like my concept art is so is so like yeah scribbly, it's, di so it's different yeah. pardon me <laughs> um but sure. um i waited a moment because these are like the song's like pretty serious and these are right like, these are pretty goofy um, and um, so yeah <laughs> you know uh, got the ambulance skull there got the the text uh um it's basically like is this too much like marceline from adventure time uh oh too late yeah too late um uh also uh, like the uh the poncho has been like such a pain in the butt to to draw like i can never figure out how that thing is moving that i'm like maybe jumpsuit yeah um uh big jackets um you know probably probably thinking about uh talking heads uh stuff making sense that amazing jacket which is stuck in everyone's mind i think um yeah. <laughs> um Let's see. How can I resize? The... It is too big to resize. Um, uh, let's see. What else have I got? Um, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, then the, the, <laughs> this is like getting into, deep into silly territory, the, uh, the chibi Stomp Snow, so, um, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, rest in peace, um, Toriyama. Yeah. Um, yeah. And kind of a, you know, studying the masters, um, for a while there. I'll never be as good as the old masters. Yeah. 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 That yeah, I mean, what a what a loss. Yeah. But you know, you can see here that you it's in the eyes. Yeah, the, yeah. that was the cross eye like it's Dragon cool. Ball yeah, yeah, style. Yeah. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's cool. Um, I'll give you a couple more Mis miscellaneous outfits. Uh, a few more characters in there. You know, just thinking about <laughs> different ways to um, do that. Um, more heads getting beyond some snow so yeah yeah um, <laughs> too many files <laughs> we're getting used to OBS here yeah um, yeah um, oh there you go there's, there's a, another there's little one yeah. um, also like I think getting some like suits in there like um, that was something I was like a concept of maybe like maybe the juice ranch did like extremely well so now now some snow has to have more like business like she's kinda dig she's dignified she has suits, a suit uh the, and like you know maybe a more abstracted skull hat um, um should i should i explain to them what happens at the end of the song yeah okay so at the end of the song we hear this we hear this like call right this haunting this haunting melody that my my wife sings and that is the melody of um, the the point of contact when Samsnosa maybe like I don't know I always have this like like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind sort of thing in my mind or like you know like um like girl you know like goes out <laughs> on a um, girl goes out on an adventure and like finally finds the thing that she's looking for um, all on her own which is like you know um, a, a trope that we're we're seeing more and that's great. Um, you know, oh, she, oh, it's so cute. She did it all on her own. No, not like that. Like, Sam Snows is, like, an absolute badass and, like, kind of ventured out into the wilderness so far that she literally found a remaining group of her people. So we have confirmation that there are more people that exist yeah. that are Sam Snows's, um race. Um in, which is great, and I'm gonna species. watch the um, species. Yeah, not we can't we can't. We, that's like a, a dead thing now, right? Like we can't refer to them as as race anymore. Uh, it's like species. We're, we're, it's it's under discussion. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dungeons Fine. and Dragons. Yeah, Dungeons it. and Dragons change it, so we have to we have to change it. It's like kind of a thing. So that's fair. Um, do we have? Uh, d is there anything like um any images of that, or is that like um, people can just look at that and and I make... don't have those in the concept art should we just tell here. people like oh if you um, see like the blue but there was thing. uh yeah there was a, a character design i'd posted some time ago um yeah. of Where a it, uh, um, it looked like sam snosa yeah find this like black outfit yeah um, that's not uh, sam snosa just so uh, you know and holding holding um uh they're like antenna yeah antenna. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, um, like yeah yeah um yeah so not that's not sam snosa that is a that is a person that is wearing garb that is now being worn by some snow species people um do we have like a, a a number like a population count of how many she finds uh no okay yeah it's 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 a small it's it's a small group like let, let's say it's like a, a they got some villages like a, like a tribe that's yeah. that's thriving you yeah. know they're doing pretty well um, so tons and tons of really, really important, subtle lore drops that happen within that music. Um, you might be asking yourself, well, why is Dracula singing it if Dracula died on the moon in Hylix 1? Well, um, we don't really know. <laughs> I mean, you I know. mean, Dracula, I mean, even the name Dracula is like, that was the, like, under duress like what am i gonna name this file yeah. kind of name um <laughs> i'd had like a lucid dream uh or or maybe just like a very vivid dream where you know it was like there's you know this character is like definitely dracula named dracula so so that ended up like being the kind of working title um 
And no, no, it's like too late. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind it, um, but it's uh, we can we can allow like one like out of place like Dracula or yeah, one of those names like Frankenstein or whatever. Um, Just as long as it's not Frankenstein with like a gun or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Um, so, um, essentially, uh, yeah, Samsonosa yeah. finds finds her people. Um, you know, in in a location. Uh, that we have not determined yet, but it's far. It is far from uh, New Moldul, um, and where they were all residing. Um, it's very, very far. Um, um, oh, uh, what I was also gonna say is, uh, Dracula is also like a. In Hylix one, he shows up in the kind of um, the act break scenes uh, where um, Dracula pulls a lever, like begin Act One, Act Two, and so on. Um, so he kind of he exists um uh, isn't you know on some meta it's, level yeah, it's not it like, it's not completely explicitly tied into the narrative yeah um, like or at least there's room for that um he is omniscient uh that said <laughs> i tr- i'm i don't want to get like too meta with um with hylix um yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah, see. I just, I just, it could I happen, but uh, I'm trying. Get... I'm trying not to. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not gonna be. We're um, not. We're trying to maintain the fourth wall, <laughs> except in the you know some like, uh, um, interlude and credits and title sequence. Yes, yeah. it's, it's. I've probably failed. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. Everybody's having a great time. Yeah, everybody's yeah. having a great time. We're chilling. Yeah. Um, he does die at the end of one. The I mean, like, yeah, he's on the moon. Like, you know. Let, how about this? That Dracula dies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, Chuck, you were talking about like a concept of a others taking up the mantle of Dracula. Yeah, like um, you know, like how Homer Homer is not just like one author. It was like a a pen yeah. name that like numerous people used when writing pieces over like yeah. the course of um, hundreds of years. Yeah. So it's like Drac- maybe Dracula is that we yeah. don't really know. This is something that'll be a thread that'll be. Picked yeah. up, clarified a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next so, song. So, yeah, the next song is going to be. Um, it's called Absurdity. The spe- yeah, or I think it's. Is I it think Seasons? It's, oh, it's Seasons. Yeah, it's Seasons. That's my bad. We almost skipped over Seasons, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The people, the people would have been so mad. Yep. Has the season changed? As if we arrange to kiss
All right, so there's a lot to unpack with this song. This is like such a heavy lore dump, and it's like the dance number. <laughs> like, it's like I wanted to just like totally overload this thing, like because it's such an an incredibly like stimulating song, um, and I wanted to uh, stimulate it even more with um, just like a, a bunch of information. Um, so let's let's start at the beginning. Uh, we have even an even further passing of time. Uh, you know, we, we have like with the passing of time, you have to sharpen your mind that lyric. We'll get to that. Um, so Dedas Moln recognizes that there's something going on with the ecosystem uh, because he's like the explorer. He, they, you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I only refer to Dedas Moln as he in this instance because I, the character has a male voice. Um, and I am a he, so that is, if, if I just refer to Dedas Moln as he, they understand that that is why that's happening. Um, so Dedas Moln, um, is essentially, um, you know, studying the, the changes in the ecosystem because there's all sorts of weird stuff happening. Um, we have Pat, Pat Soon. Nice. Um, yeah, Dedas any pronoun. Sure. Yeah, because it, it seems that everybody just kind of wants to, you know, assign whatever, and that's that's fine. That's cool with us because Dedas Mall is like a fucking pe yeah. Oh, dude, like if we put a thumbs up, like things happen um, on uh, on what's it called on Apple. Like it just um, it goes nuts. Um, so gotta fix the boat thing on. Jeez. Okay, nice. Um, so the the ecosystem is changing as in, you know, like new species are, you know, coming up in the food chain. New plants, new new occurrences, new events are happening that Dedas Moln has not been aware of at this point. And that's because something is changing. Um, something is having a season the seasons are changing and therefore they are bringing on um new uh and exciting things in the world of hylix so dedas Moln takes um his uh you know cousin small dunday out um on some field missions and any uh information that they gather they're sort of beaming it to like like you know some some central data thing that we haven't really figured out where that is yet or how they're sharing information but um i had mentioned the other day that like it would probably make sense if they were communicating through like the tvs or like the antenna tower like the giant tower the yeah. antenna thing. communicating with yeah. uh, pun gorma they're communicating with pun gorma uh you know sam snow says like you know like not receiving these transmissions at this time so it's dennis Malm and pun gorma um, and Wayne is gone too. So we have one by one, um, you know, people are sort of like leaving, um, but not in a way that's like, it's not as drastic as when Wayne left. Sam Sosa is still around, but she's busy doing, uh, you know, things with, with the homies, with the Sam Snosa homies. So, uh, Small Dunday and Dennis Small are out and they're treated to this delightful, like, you know, jungle bioluminescent bug you know, insect light show thing, which is why the music is so jovial and jungly and Latin. Um, I really like Latin fusion music. It's just probably one of my, you know, favorite things, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in my thirties time for jazz. Um, and I feel like, um, one of those, one of the things that like, I really wanted to focus on was like, I guess it was subconscious too, because I was writing the song. I remember like, like doing, I was doing this song in a live stream. If I don't know if people caught it, but I was, I was sort of like producing this song in a live stream with people. And I was freaking out because I was convinced that I had stolen a song. I was like, this is too good to not have already existed somewhere. I was bugging. I was like, but it sounds so good. Like, what is it? And then, a while later, I was like, oh, wait, I'm just doing a faster, more aggressive version of the Dance of the Paper Cup. Like, I'm literally doing, a, like, it is Dedas Moln's song from Moon Age Lobotomy. It's just 
a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more dancey. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I stole for myself. Great. Thank you so much. Um, didn't have to freak out at all about it. Now, there are things that happen um, with the vocals. You'll notice if you listen closely, my voice is pretty hoarse. It's pretty raspy. Um, this was one of the uh, songs that I like really tried to go hard on. Um, it was the second song that I had recorded um, in the session and my voice had just had it. I was still recovering from having those vocal issues. Um, but I had, I had masked a lot of my vocal problems because I wanted to like sort of squidify his voice. I play a lot of Splatoon, <laughs> but I didn't want to copy the Splatoon um, patch. So I just added some stuff that I thought would be really neat and really cool. Um, and yeah, that's how you get Dennis Mullen's voice. Um, it's a it's a composite of like chorus flange, um, tremolo, um, like just just all sorts of weird stuff. A bit of a bit of analog delay in there as well. And I also um, muffled his voice quite a bit. Um, so. Um, we have, has the season changed? Has it rearranged to give or to replace? This is a classic line that establishes that Dennis Mullen is inquisitive. He, he is, he is questioning what is happening. Um, uh, the planet with all her charms calls me to explore, to discover what had not been seen before of all the times and places and all the untouched spaces. I'm endlessly inspired to know more. It's kind of like, you know, that kind of rhyme scheme. Love that. It always works. It's super fun. Um, the nights are long with an absent moon. I had to make a reference to the name of the record, and I also had to make reference to... Wayne being absent and also the physical moon being absent. Like, like, you know, it's, it's multiple things. Like it's both Wayne being absent and it's the moon in the sky being absent. Like they're still trying to figure out like what is going to happen to our world after, you know, like now that there's really no moon for us to, you know, exist under. Um, then the chorus is like this kind of weird, fun lyric. Shed your carapace and grow anew. Sow your seeds and uh, change your path. Every season is a story waiting to unfold. This is sort of like, maybe this is like, I've always considered it to be like a, a nursery rhyme or some type of traditional song that Dennis Mullen has been carrying. Or maybe it's something deep from, you know, uh, like the, the poems or whatever that, that Dennis Mullen has crafted. Um but it's like, it's just some artsy, you know, like refined, you know, gentle person shit that I wanted to kind of like write in the voice of Dennis Mullen. Um, verse two is very important. Since we walked upon that island in the sky, I felt the change myself, but cannot reason why. What made you disappear is part of you still here. The mystery of this intrigues me still. Okay, so Dennis Mullen definitely talking about Wayne. Um, you know, these, these, these characters are not beyond being traumatized or being changed by these these massive events walking on the Hylum Xylem and having to fight Gibby on the Hylum Xylem changed everybody Wayne delivers this line like Wayne's supposed to be chilled out and laid back but Wayne delivers that Gibby right like he like we have this it's different something has happened uh, you know to our crew like they've they've changed so drastically um and so Dennis Mullen is questioning that what what you know, I felt like there was a change on the Hylum Xylem. I could see that, that all of us were different after that. What made you disappear is part of you still here. That's referencing to, hmm, something's going on. He's starting to look around and seeing that there's, there's definitely some, you know, creatures and mutants that sort of look like Wayne or they have Wayne elements and they're, they're like kind of, being treated to this delight, this delightful show, but he's starting to notice things. Small Dunday is starting to notice things, um, and we carry on with an absent moon. I wonder if the cycle will end soon. Um, so he's wondering, like, yeah, I know about the, I know about the Waynes at Wayne House, but like, you know, with without Wayne, you know, is the is the cycle gonna end? Is the is the is is this? I wonder, like, if you're gone, what what leaves, what leaves, you know, what's going on at Wayne House? So he's having all of these burning questions that are kind of coming to the forefront of his mind um, while they're on this uh, this expedition. And then we have the bridge. 
all of the lore dumps happen in the bridge, if you notice. Um, this was definitely written in the style of like a Lin Manuel Miranda type thing. I, I, you know, my daughter has, you know, had me watch Moana with her like 47,000 times. I got a chance to see Hamilton on Broadway a few years ago. Um, you know, shortly after, I, I want to say like it was right when COVID lifted. Or maybe it was like just before COVID happened. The point is, is that I saw it. It was really incredible. And hip hop in Broadway and in musicals is is unbelievable. So I wanted to kind of pay tribute to how we were there now. And that's like a really cool thing. And I kind of wanted to just put a hip hop person there. So with the passing of time, you have to sharpen your mind. Those who seek just might find the answer lurking behind you, crawling in the shadows. Now you tremble with fear. What you knew disappeared in the new season is here. And then the fight is on. We're in 9-8, we're in a chaotic time signature, and Dennis Moln and Small Dunday are being assailed by a very obviously, you know, affected Wayne variant mutant creature. And we kind of sort of decided on this the other day what the creature, like, officially is. Yeah, um, um, uh, I don't have a concept art uh, thing of it at the moment, but uh, it's a... Sabretooth Wayne cat. Um, so like Wayne Wayne's cat from Hilux One is now this uh, this beast. Yeah. Or or maybe one of the the kittens from Hilux One. Um, there you go. Yeah. And we know this to be true because at the very moment for it it changes. So oh, some really cool stuff that's happening in the nine eight section. There are these big like boom boom boom. That's like a motif from Hilux 2. I wanted to kind of be like, we're we're in a battle now, you know, like, but I wanted to make the chords really wide. So I had to go and like open up some Rachmaninoff pieces to study like how Rachmaninoff would voice his chords. And um, that was like, like a big, a big thing that I did. Like I studied that for like an hour while I was, you know, like writing these, these chords out. And what's cool is that it didn't take me that long to figure it out because, you know, it's very much like... Okay, I've figured out the voicing. Now I just have to apply it to you know this melody that already exists, um, and uh, then at the end we have this boom, and then we're back into Dennis Mullen's theme. So that moment when you hear that melody, that's actually the melody from Endless Cycle. Right? We hear it in the piano. It's super quick. It's super subtle. But that's the moment that Dennis Mullen locks eyes and Small Dunday locks eyes with this creature, and they they very narrowly escape. They escape with their lives, but they very narrowly escape. Like the creature in, you know, in my interpretation, what's going on in the theater of my mind, maybe the creature gets like, you know, tangled up in some, um, in like some vines and, and can't get out. Um, and they literally bounce. And then as they're running away and he's like taking notes while running, he says, it's true that seasons change. They rearrange to give or to replace. He has recognized this is, this is what we have in store for Wayne or what Wayne has in store for us. Wayne as a species, not Wayne Prime. We don't know where Wayne Prime is, but the Waynes themselves are changing, and they are changing rapidly. Um, I'll study every path you make, referring to you as the species of Wayne. I'll fight to see you once again, referring to you as in Wayne Prime. Speaking about two separate Waynes, I love cryptic language. It's probably one of my favorite things when writing lyrics. What what did Chuck mean by this? That's what I meant by this. It's a huge element of lore. Now we know that Wayne is on a path to... It, it, it's, it's rapidly evolving and unraveling everything else around it. Um while also building up some things. Like, they just came from an awesome, like, Technicolor, you know, like, bioluminescent light show. Like, how bad could it be? Oh, shit. A saber tooth Wayne demon cat thing. You know, like, it. it's... There are a lot of moving parts that Mason and I still have to explore, but one thing is certain. We know that there are Waynes changing rapidly, and they are terrifying. Um, did you want to kind of, like, talk about, like... Um, like... We can talk a little bit about like some of the, like the direction of like character design. You were saying it's going to be like more, um, or or creature design. It's going to be more like, we've talked about like horror 
like hmm. a, like a lot more like it's like gonna be scarier. Um, like because some of the characters in Hilux Two and Hilux One are like they're kind of goofy. Yeah. Um. Like... I mean, I've I've actually made I've posted a lot of the character designs already because uh, I have no discipline, <laughs> so I'm just like I'm like <laughs> I made some assets for Hilux Three. I'm gonna post them right now. Uh, there were, there were like a probably like two months of like no i'm gonna i'm gonna hold it all back and then there'll be this massive reveal but um <laughs> you know <laughs> it didn't happen um uh uh i don't i mean I don't, so you know if uh <laughs> if the stuff i have been posting is uh it i think it's i think it's, it's a like more horrific maybe yeah uh, there have been some like undulating like organs and guts and yeah, stuff yeah. um um more so uh there have been some like kind of prehistoric things the uh the, the precambrian the like, brain thing uh hallucinogenia hylicogenia hi whatever the yeah. um like precambrian kind of wanes the uh the sessile wane the like non-moving wane that is like Oh, sticks it, to the ocean like, floor and yeah, like yeah. waves back and forth the the, um, the wane extremophile like yeah. it, it like lives near like a volcanic vent and just like gets fucking cooked its whole yeah, life and yeah. doesn't care <laughs> it's yeah. just like yeah i'm chilling it's hot yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah yeah I, so so this is like this is like a big this is like a big thing that happens in that like this is like Plus, like, the name of the record, the name is dropped in this song. So we know that it's, like, a serious song. It's the it's the point at which, like, the story really takes a turn. Like, well, Wayne left, and what does that leave us with? Well, there's a big problem. Huge problem. So uh, Mason's going to share some stuff up on the screen. <laughs> oh, these, are, oh, the, yeah, these yeah. are just some, like... <laughs> These are so silly, so not horror, but some of the Wayne <laughs> tough belly underside concepts. The Wayne worm with a uh, Tyro riding it, and there's there's gonna be a lot more of Tyro. Um, yeah, in this game. <laughs> um, yeah, so much, so much more. Um, uh, yeah, whole whole communities. They're all dude. Um, are they doing a? Um, are they doing like a Tyro? What's it called? Like a like a phone? Um, like a telefund? Um, yeah, yeah, they're they're combining their powers. They're, uh, you know. um, Call now and you can receive a Tyro tote. You can receive a Tyro tote from us. Let's see. I've got some of these in Blender, actually. Um, Tyro scam callers, dude. Scam likely. That's who scam likely is. It's just a bunch of fucking Tyros. Yeah. You know, so some of those are more developed. Oh, yeah, Uh, yeah, yeah. We've talked about, like, these neat little, like, Tyro um, huts. Of course, they got got to live in buildings that are the same shape as they are. I'm going to turn this Tyro hut into a, a Tyro home. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Tyro Village. Yeah, people yeah, you guys you guys are getting it. Yeah. yeah. They're good. Yeah. They they understand. They they're they're picking up what we're putting down. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean like there's just a lot of stuff um happening from that one song alone. And um I don't know if there's anything else to discuss from that song. Uh the next song is gonna be a, a rather like uh large reveal. Um, hmm. that people have been waiting for. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I, I do have one of those newer character designs. I'm just going to throw oh, that yeah. up here throw it up. for a moment. Yeah. Um, oh, this is so this cool. Thing. This um, thing is so cool. So, you know, um, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll just say like Hilux three is taken. Uh, where did that go? Oh, it disappeared because the file ended and it didn't loop. Oh, I'm, nice. I'm going to have to just keep replaying that. Um, you know, I'm I'm taking my time on uh, Hylix three here, but um, I have been working a lot uh, since the second game, uh, just building up a lot of new art um, skills, uh, new mediums. Uh, I'm like, you know, I, I'm like a sponge. Uh, I've been just soaking up more uh, more visions. That are soon going to be squeezed into Hylix Three. We um, were we were discussing too the other day that like Mason and I like over the course of just the past few years. Like I mean I've been so swamped with like you know work on on another game and another game yeah. and another game and all this stuff. And meanwhile you know like Mason and I have like we've been changing a lot. Like like major 
life changes have happened for the, the both of us um, in ways that like we didn't like we just didn't really see any of this coming you know like like we like everybody being so stoked about Hilux like you know I'm still so grateful to just be a part of the community and to have you know a captain that's that's sharing his his space and his platform with me um you know I never take it for granted and I'm always just trying to do like the the best thing for everybody um including our you know Mason's IP um, the future of our work as collaborators and and most importantly for for the fans the people that are are supporting um, us um, probably one thing that we uh, had both experienced this past year was um, you know like like you got to work with a guy that you like have admired yeah, for most of yeah. most of your career um, yeah um, uh, last year I got into a um, claymation technique called um strata cut where you you build an animation in a block of clay uh in or a loaf. A, a loaf of clay yeah, as yeah. it's as the strata cut jargon goes um the, there was a famous example of this on Wee's playhouse um back in the day um uh, by an animator named david daniels uh and he uh, he is he recently uh, got like a studio assistant who kind of set up his Instagram for him uh, and started posting some of this stuff again and including his um, uh, videos uh, like video tutorials he had done back in the 90s but I think the the videos hadn't been um, put on the internet yet it was from like 1995 um, and animators uh, myself included started seeing those demos and tutorials and uh, realizing we could do it ourselves uh, so like here's one example of it um, what's this animation called this one's called i've just titled it fireball it's kind of a working title um but yeah it's a it's like a block of clay you know about yay big um and i have a, a dithered version of it too here so like you know and this is this is like the kind of stuff that i'll be bringing into hilux 3 you know just novel stuff for the uh attack animations battle animations um and uh so besides just like figuring that technique out um the the guy uh david daniels he noticed that i had been doing this and contacted me about a workshop he was doing at Pratt University. Um, that was last October, um, and I was able to go to Pratt and teach at this like week long Stratacut workshop. Um, we had maybe thirty people in a room, all like really um, devoted like animators, people excited about stop motion and claymation, um, learning uh, techniques from uh, this from David Daniels, who's like this genius of strata cut animation some of the, and um you know the, my example here is it's like um it's like even this is a pretty basic example um in terms of the technical know-how you would need for it um there's all kinds of more in-depth stuff with like rotating cubes um uh a woman on instagram uh animated of of like rubik's cube rotating and being solved in like strata cut recently um that's unbelievable uh yeah. um uh, sun sun eva animation um I'm, I'm following it you can yeah it's in my look for it it's awesome um and it's just like some some you can yeah. do some brain sun, bending sun eva animation. yeah 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 um sun eva animation yeah, awesome stuff um, has it, yeah. yeah and the, the strata the strata cut workshop is called strataganza it was just such a utopian experience um and that's that's the kind of thing i've um you know the uh the success of hilux 2 has allowed me to do uh have have um the freedom to do uh, interesting stuff like that and it's all gonna make the next game uh, a lot richer um and you know keep me sane enough to uh <laughs> to make the, the second the uh, third game um yeah uh you know because uh it's yeah. it's it's coming along and like yeah. just some just some like so mason got a chance to work with like a guy that he really admires and you know we like 
over the course of this, you know, past, you know, couple of years, I've gotten comfortable with like just contacting people and, and kind of just like, you know, growing, growing, um, growing as a person, um, you know, like through, throughout the whole like networking process. Like I'm never trying to treat everybody as like this, you know, like, oh yeah, like, like, you know, these are all, these are all like the friends that I've made along the way type thing. Like, you know, I, I truly, everybody that I meet and talk to, it's like, it's, it's a treasure. And, you know, like recently I had a, um, I had an opportunity to perform at MAGFest with, um, Ian Cowell. Um, and his uh, yeah. group of extraordinary goblins. Yep. Um, shout Ian, out to Ian Cowell. Of, yeah, shout out to Ian Cowell. Of Bi Ian, Score. Ian Neon. I, Ian Neon. Yeah, yeah. Get this. Get this. Yeah. Buy score mentioned. Um, yeah. Get get their stuff. It's unreal. Carry Ian. You guys are amazing. Everybody in the in the goblin group. So cool. But it was like it just like that was like leading up to you know this this like magfest. We were leading up to that. Um, um, I just I like developed a friendship with Chihiro Fujioka on Twitter and I talk with him every day. Like I'll send him a note every day and like he's playing with Nobuo Uematsu in in uh Nobuo Uematsu and Kontiki so with with his homies. And it's like really cool that I can just contact Chihiro and be like, "Hey, like hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great day. Love your drum video." And it's every day. Every day I'll leave a comment or I'll send a DM or whatever. And for those of you who don't know, Chihiro Fujioka is the director of Super, the original Super Mario RPG. Um, so he has a lot of knowledge. He's also played in uh, numerous groups. Uh, the big one uh, from the 80s was a band called Mr. Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S. The music is unbelievable. It's like a prog group. He, he was the drummer in that band. And he also just plays in a bunch of other groups. I contacted him and asked him if he wanted to play djembe on In Plain Sight um, for a song about, you know, knowing people from uh, far away and making music with them. And he agreed. And um, he's just a delight, you know. The, like, we, we both got a chance to, to make, you know, art with our, with our prime inspirations. And that was like a big thing that happened this year and i feel like that's changed me a lot and i can tell that like mason having worked next to david daniels that like it has it, you've changed significantly like we've both changed in in like we've received these affirmations of like okay this is what we did we're doing the right thing this is what yeah. we need to do moving forward like there's this whole like for me personally there's like an i won't speak for you or anything but like there's like this honor thing involved with it you know, like how do I how do I honor these people that gave so much to me, and how can I pass that along? And so, it's just really nice um, to you know, kind of like to even just to be in this stream with all of you and have you guys like losing your minds and dropping emojis and like you know clapping emojis and everybody just having a good time talking and being so excited. It's like we are only passing along what we received from from other people like from other artists like we're just kind of you know like moving through it and it's just such a big it's a, it's a part of the cycle you know <laughs> it's the endless cycle of yep. art um so the next track huge lore dump get ready for get ready to take a huge dump it's gonna be a big lore dump i'm sorry yeah. i had to say it i had yeah. to say it yeah um everyone's gonna be really really excited um because we're gonna listen to the spell of absurdity and then we're going to talk about it. It's a big deal. Huge dog. Huge dog. <laughs>
man, that song. So I'll give you guys an idea of like why, like why um, I put stuff like that into anything that I write. Um, so like when I was writing that song, uh, I wanted it to be like a, like a ballad. I wanted a second ballad. Uh, and I remember teaching my, uh, my student, uh, Theo Rosenberg, who is now like an unbelievable musician. Um, and he's just like, you know, he's worked on a bunch of stuff with me and he even helped master, uh, the music uh for flip side the entire ost for flip side you're gonna hear a lot more from theo in the future and i just wanted to to mention him because he's such an important part of how this song kind of sort of came to be um i remember i had to teach him a song uh called can you stand the rain which is by a boy band uh, from the 80s called new edition and i really wanted to capture the spirit of that song without it being like too on the nose but the only reason why we learned that song was because his mom, uh, Lisa, wanted him to learn it. Because he was like, oh, I don't know what to learn for this week. And she said from the other other room, like, oh, you should, you should do, you know, Can You Stand the Rain by New Edition. And so that song has kind of always been like in, you know, my rotation. Uh, it's a great song. It's really, really like, you know, it's very boy band. Um... But I wanted to, you know, kind of capture that moment. And then, of course, you know, it's like, it's, uh, you know, it opens up with, by the time you read this, I'm already gone. Um, you know, if, you, if you've ever lost a parent, um, which, which I have, um, it's, it's, it's like this deeply, like, life-changing thing. Um, and my dad was, like, a great musician. And I kind of wanted to, uh, you know, pay tribute to, like, hey... I know that you're not here to hear all this great music and hear, you know, watch all of these people say like, go Mason, go Chuck, keep going, 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 give us, give us more. We love you guys so much, but the best I can do is write music with the feeling and the sentiments of, you know, you, you were here and you're going to be here through this music. Um, and so we open up, uh, to Clawman writing a letter to his child um, right before the um, right before the gang supposedly breaks breaks the doors down the alarms have been sounded and Clawman the only thing that he can do is just start penning this letter to his child and who who is the child uh yeah um so uh, Clawman's uh, daughter uh, will be an important character in Hylix 3. Um, uh, Claudia is the uh, Claudia. name I've uh, settled on. Um, having gone through every other possible claw pun. Um, uh, let's see. Um... Hmm, I don't know. How can I... <laughs> how, not to, how not to explain too much. Right. Um, uh, uh, so, and uh, Claudia will be, um, you know, some of the, um, it's a, it's really about Clawman. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, like in Hylix one, uh, Clawman, he's, you know, in charge of this, of some kind of laboratory factory. So, uh, Claudia is going to be, uh, picking up some of those threads, uh, a lot of, um, uh, engineering knowledge, uh, manufacturing, um, Kind of um, the you know the genius inventor of uh, Hylix three, um, um, hmm. <laughs> Hylix three. What is that? What are we laughing at? God damn it! God damn it! Talk. God damn oh it, yeah. God, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Hylix three right now. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's you know we we wanted to you know like kind of expand upon this other thing too like well i mean clawman gets gets killed in hylix one and so he just comes back right well we you know we wanted to like well if he's gone and he's leaving this letter like by the time you read this i'm already gone notice that in hylix one and in hylix two you're controlling the characters to 
you know, you die and you enter the afterlife. And then you grind some meat, you get a little stronger, and you leave the afterlife and go back to the real world. Clawman, he's like, you know, like I've just been referring to him as like the conscientious objector. You know, he he's just he says to himself like, what what truly waits for me on the other side? Um, perhaps he hasn't died yet, and perhaps that mystery has, you know, in, in, intrigued him. Uh, and Clawman is is not has not returned from the afterlife. We'll just say that. Yeah, um, yeah. In Hylix, uh, the afterlife is uh, to some extent exists as this physical space. So uh, we have to assume that, like you know, he's Clawman has remained there. Yeah, um, so we don't know. We don't really know what's going on. And also, you know, like I don't know if we we don't want to get. Too uh, far there'll down be that some. Road. There'll be some further complications on yes. the afterlife. Uh, some uh, some problems yes. uh, with the resurrection uh, business. Um, in Hylix 3. Um, the spell of absurdity. Some people have been questioning what the spell is. It's not It's not a magic spell. I remember I had a lyric that one of the notes that Mason gave me, I had the word magic in the, in the record, in the lyrics. And Mason was like, please avoid using magic. And I was like, hmm. oh, okay. And I was like, Does, is mystical a better word? And he was like, yes, that's better. And it, it's just like, avoiding like the concept of magic is always because we don't know what it is but like you know using magic it kind of using the word magic kind of feels like a cop-out and so we don't really know like you know uh we prefer to use mystic yeah as, mystical as our cop yeah, yeah yeah so our <laughs> mystical is our cop-out now but um the spell instead of it being a magic spell it's not a magic spell it is a spell as in a passing of time sit for a spell the spell of absurdity is the time in which Gibby reigned in Hylix 1. And it's a time when everything went to shit. Everything, nothing made sense. The random generation of text, we don't really know what's going on. Why has it not affected the crew? We don't know. Why has it not affected certain people and it's only affected, like, you know, specific characters to speak, you know, in, uh, uh, speak in riddles or admit defeat? That type of thing, you know. Um, we don't know. We're 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 figuring it out, but we know that like that event has a name. Um, lyrics. Let's go in here, dude. This, yeah. Okay, so like classic. Like my dearest child. By the time you read this, I'm already gone. Um, maintain order in the chaos in the tower. So we have like a like a tower. Um, you know, it's supposed to be, you know. Um, like we know, we know that like he's residing somewhere in a tower, so it's like a clawman confirmation thing. Um, the king has reached his final act. Oh, um, talking about final acts and finales and all that. If you notice that piano line, bum 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 bum. It's the finale theme from Hylix Two. I just wanted to lift that and put that somewhere else. Um, so that's why you have like that classic line at the end. This may be my finale, but it is your beginning. The last, like how he signs off for his daughter to find um, the letter. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, like, I don't know. The bridge is all always so good. Um, yeah, I mean, like the chorus, you don't really need to say anything about the, the thing. If you feel alone. Oh, is it 10? Oh, wait, we got to Hold on. We're good. <laughs> it's almost time. Um, so, um, yeah, like iron will and flesh of stone. Um, yeah. Putting threnody in there. Like I, I, I had to use that word. I, I love that word so much. Mm. I, I had to put it in. Um, I have, a, I have like a, I have a very early concept drawing for, for Claudio. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Throw that up. Here. Get that, get um, that up. Get that this up there. will change. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, something Again, I, lo I love putting everyone in jumpsuits. Um, They're great. It's it's really fun. It's um, a really fun... <laughs> you know, the uh, Hilux one had those, like, utility guy action figure bodies for everyone. So it's kind of bringing that 
forward um and i like this idea for like the um her, claw man but like but, her, but, with, her, but with pretty eyes and yeah, like those horns kind of like demurely but, but she can't even see shit <laughs> she can't those. see anything um yeah <laughs> so good uh, and i think i've got some of the like the gremlins from uh hylix one that's great which uh yeah those didn't quite those made it in at like one of gibby's attacks um so cool so awesome i i haven't even seen this yet so this is just like this is like a treat for me too it's Mm. like oh cool yeah like you get to see the color scheme now yeah which is really neat yeah um the bridge contagious dreams creating kings how are we so lost it's like you know like how could we like how like how could we have let this happen how could we have believed that this was that this was the right thing to do how could we have served gibby like i don't get it like he's he's starting to lose the meaning of of why he's you know doing this it's just adding more like lore and meaning behind Clawman's character even though we thought Clawman was kind of like a throwaway like yeah an unshell pass character we just wanted to kind of like expand upon it so that we could introduce a new a new character um what chaos brings such terrible things left us with a sunken cost so like the whole business aspect didn't you say like they were turning into like dollar signs um yeah i mean you know that's that's the sunken cost fallacy if you don't know what it is it's like turning into dollar signs wasn't that something that you said um well in hylix one there's the like the laboratory um you that's that was probably more you know my my angst at being super poor at that point um so there's the the you, you pull a lever and these uh you know pitiful test tube creatures are uh turned into stacks of bills um, yeah. so you can buy the spaceship uh to get to the moon they're, um, they're, yeah turn they turn into money yeah okay yeah, so it's, it's some it's some heavy commentary um <laughs> and then honestly how could we be free from it all opposing rationality was too big to fail so the line too big to fail is like another another business thing um you know like like labs and and engineering and whatnot and then um close your eyes willfully and wet, let it wash over the land um, so that I, w- I had that that feeling of like, um, uh, you know, it's time. It's time, dude. It's oh, time. oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's time. Yeah. yeah, guys, it's 1024. It's beanie yep. time. We had to yep. do it. Yeah. We, got, <laughs> we had to do it. You know, it's, like, yeah, it's 1024. It's 1024. Yeah. It's, it's, beanie beanie time. Time. It's, it's the official time that Mason and I observe as beanie time every night. We call each other in our jammies and we say, hey, you got your beanie on. I got my beanie on. It's beanie time. Uh, So (laughs) if you've watched the first stream, we put our beanies on. (laughs) Like I put my beanie on and then Mason put his beanie on. It's 1024 and we were cracking up and we were just like, Mason brought that shit. We were laughing. It's really funny. He was like, I'm going to put it on at 1024. And I'm like, you're sick bastard. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck uh, Chuck gave this to me. I got this. Birthday like, present? Like, I think yeah. I think I got it for you for Christmas. Okay, it's yeah. For, yeah, Christmas. Yeah. I I you know how long it took me to find a place that would print in impact font or, or not impact? This, it's, this it's, bang, that's the font. That's right? that's the bangers font. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't look all that good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, like really, really. Um. Oh, and then of course, like the the telltale sign that, um, Claudia is now officially in the mix is um my my wife sings again. She she comes in and sings the upper octave, uh, in the song, and so that's supposed to be like, you know, Claudia reading the letter and like you know, kind of like like the superimposed like claw man singing and you know like te- shiny te- anime tears in in his eyes or lack thereof and Claudia reading this letter and then like this may be my finale but it is your beginning maybe like a cinematic fade of claw man's face into claudia's face and her realizing what her destiny has now become so um yeah diane diane my wife is just like she was so funny she just came downstairs and she was like yeah i'll sing whatever you want i sang the line for like a couple times she nailed it in like two takes she's just such a pro it's it's great love her she's amazing um and she's you know she's great she's she's a great artist and a great mom and a great person and a great everything um yeah so um the last song well the second to last song um we have uh is it oh did you put oh world begins to wane yeah Mm. all right so this is a long one but we're gonna get through it 
and uh, then we're gonna talk because it's it's the last like big thing, and then we'll talk about stuff and answer questions and hang out for a bit, and then Mason and I are gonna play video games and stuff. Yep. All right. Cool. So here we go. As the world begins to wane. Just me and you As the world begins 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you gotta do it sideways. You gotta do it sideways. <laughs> Dude, I'll be counting stuff for my students a bit. So one, a one chord is, and it's just like, <laughs> most inopportune moment ever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a thing that Apple does where it just, it populates emojis. Like, imagine if we were like, yeah, we're at a rock concert. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> wow. It's stupid. Thank it's you. really dumb. Yeah. People are just, are, the people at Apple just get real jobs, please. Uh, so, um, essentially, we have a, a, a final standoff between Pongorma and now now many years have passed and um you know Dedas Mullen and Pongorma have established a um a very uh you know uh uh like solid connection in terms of like you know sharing data with each other about like you know Pongorma is basically like the boots on the ground and Dedas Mullen is like crunching the numbers about what is happening and and trying to track the the trajectories and the changes in these wane mutations um and the way uh we we open up we, we open up like in the middle of like uh you know th this this battle with with pongorma um and a uh giant swarm of like wane insects or arachnids um think like starship troopers style wanes um they're angry they're irate they're moving in in swarms they're moving he pongorma is getting zerg rush basically um and it's really um it's it's really something else um we're we're in the dead of night it's very dark um there's no light of the moon because the moon doesn't exist so it's it's extremely dark out and, um, you know, it, it's just like the only thing that is lighting this battlefield is Pongorma's lightning bolts. Um, and he is, you know, in, in, the mid, in between these uh, battles, which take place like either nightly, like when, you know, the Wayne population rehatches or restocks or whatever you want to call it. Pongorma is left during the day um, to to rest and kind of like tend to his wounds if he has any. Um, and you got to remember that this this guy is old. He's an extremely old being. We don't really know how old Pongorma is, but everybody has lovingly referred to him as Grandpa, and that's sort of what we went with because he's super old. Um, so, um, let's take a look at the lyrics. Uh. Mints to meet upon defeat. Now you are the enemy. Um, so you have that uh, uh, that motif uh, that kind of just gets trans transferred over um, from uh, Oda's ear. I just wanted to kind of like it's the finale of of the musical. I kind of wanted to just be like, okay, like let's fit in as many motifs as we can um, to let people know that it's the finale. So it opens up with that, but also that motif itself is just the main theme from Hylix 2. Um, is that um, so then I had to open it up when he gets really pensive in the verses. We walked in single file. I recall every mile in an RPG. When you're walking with your, you know, your walk cycle is you're walking in a single file. And I wanted to take it all the way back to the first game. Um, uh, there was no leader quite like you. Now what are we to do? So he's talking about Wayne and like where Wayne Prime is. Where 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 is the primary Wayne from Hilux Two to to help? Why did he leave? Why is this happening? So Pongorma's feeling a little upset that he now has to go and like kill all of these. Maybe a lot upset. You know? Yeah, he's he's pissed. Like he's like you know, but at the same time he's he's emotional. Um, you walked away, we chose to stay as time went by. 
it had its way. Like time had it had a has a way of changing everybody. Um, our team was lost and our purpose was frayed. A shabby end, but I habituate. I've alas, I've habituated myself to the shabby planet. I just love that line, and I wanted to add it into um, the lyrics. Um, the novel pre-chorus in the quiet hours on this battlefield of ours, hours and hours. Love that. Um, uh, I think of you all fondly. So this line, what everyone has to understand is uh, this was the last thing that I was recording vocally. This was the very last song that I was recording vocally and I was extremely emotional. So if you listen really close, you can hear that I delivered that line and just so you're aware, I had to click stop during the recording because I had to just like fucking weep. It was bad. I was going through a lot and this was the, I, I finally got my voice back and this was the end of the road for the record. I was about to be finished. I was recording these vocals and that was going to be it. And then it was going to be out in, in, you know, real life. It was going to be out in the wild. And so I recorded that line and then I clicked stop. You can hear it. It's, that's a very good, it, like, you know, listen to that line. That's as much emotion as I could put into that without breaking up in that moment. Um, while what remains of you will shift and rearrange an endless cycle of constant change. So he's talking about, even though you're not here, the Wayne I know is not here. These Waynes are moving forward. And boy, is it bad. Um, when you block out the sun, I'll turn on the lights. So like kind of talking about like, you know, there's so many of these creatures that like they seemingly block out the light of the sun. Um, like... Uh, so he'll turn on the lights. He'll, he'll use his lightning bolts um, and bring 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 some heat. Um, many versus one in continuous strife. This war has changed us two, us two, the number two. Um, we are not the same. We're not the same anymore after this. Um, it's just me and you as the world begins to wane. So the waning world is this this event that he is kind of like attaching a name to like the world is beginning to wane w a n e not w a w a y n e but i mean it, it both are correct um verse 2 gets a little crazier for many years all i've known is war what do we get if we win why even bother keeping score so he's he's pissed he's letting everybody know like he's lost the he's lost the meaning in fighting now he's just fighting to survive. But why are, why are we doing this? Why have, I, why have I spent my life doing this if this is how it's going to end? He's tired. He's ready. The one, now he talks about the teammates, uh, the, or rather the, the, the gang. The wanderer left in search of her past. So we have that wanderer reference. Um, the explorer found the answers to the question that he asked, meaning that Dennis Mullen found the answers to the questions that he was asking. He 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 was like, well, what's going on with Wayne? They know what's going on with Wayne now. He's been beaming this information upon Gorma this whole time, and now like they have to basically be on top of it. They have to make sure that they are consistently quelling these waves of Waynes. Um, otherwise, everybody dies. And Pond Gorm is the only person strong enough. I mean, if everybody else was together, if Samsnosa was around and Dennis Mullen didn't have to be manning, you know, the battle stations and taking down the data, then maybe they would stand a chance. But it's just Pond Gorma who's able to fight on the battlefield. And so here we are. Um, and the old man stayed. He stayed an aged knight set in his ways. Um, and then we have that, like, really cool bridge. Charge it up, grab the bolt, and let it fly. And then I go into the, the guitar solo that is just the melody from Bolt Thrower. Um, and then when will the cycle end is sung using Wayne's endless cycle theme. That violin that you hear at the very end is a flat line. That's what it was meant to be for. Uh, Pangorma dies. Everybody pour one out for Pangorma. He is dead. Um, when we talked about killing a character, you know, Mason was like, yeah, I can, I, yeah, I can get down with killing a character. And my response was, I want to make sure it hurts. <laughs> like, I really want to, like, so, you um, know. I mean, that yeah. said, uh, um, I'll be giving Pond Gorma a, a proper uh, send-off in the uh, the eventual uh, interactive product. Um, you know, it will be, uh, it will be shown. Um, yeah, we're, like, we're talking about it all the time of, like, how how we want to show it like we want to capture 
those moments visually. Yeah, um, yeah, it won't be like recap. Like, by the way, Fangorma died. You know, <laughs> it's not gonna. Yeah, like text it, like, scroll. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna like Mason's gonna have like a cool. We're we're coming up with some really cool shit. Yeah. Um. And that. And you know what's really funny is we were thinking about that, and people were saying in the Hylix fandom, "Man, I really hope that they that they do like you know some intro that that you know brings up the events of Absent Moon." And it's like that's so like reassuring, like to Mason and to me that you guys really enjoyed this this you know piece of art. Um. And then, that, like, it just, there's there's really nothing else to the song. It's just like, yeah, leading up to Pangorma's death, um, he dies, and um, we, you know, we, we kind of like like if you want to know what's going on in the theater of the mind, like the camera pans up, you know, like we have that like that big solo that gets interrupted by you know the the um, that motif that that thing like um that's just like from you know that's a big stick that motif is like you're fighting like a harrowing battle um that's what that's meant for and i feel like you know it just gets interrupted with this like he goes out he it comes in strong and he goes out with a whimper like he just it what it, it he was no match and the camera sort of pans up as the wanes dissipate, the, the arachnid or giant ant wanes or whatever you want to call it, they dissipate and he he's just like in fucking pieces on the ground. Like, you know, like limbs detached, like you could think of it that way or like, you know, he's just, he's very beat up. Like he just, the dude is not, he is not alive at this point. And with his last breaths, he, he asks up to the sky, when will the cycle end? knowing that there is a cycle because Dennis Malm has done the research and you know yeah so then we have one more track and it's just an instrumental we're just going to play through it really quick and we're going to talk about what it means and then we'll answer some questions sounds good So it'll be this one. Yeah, just do just do that one. They're all they're all good. Yeah, I think we finished awakening. Okay. All right. So, um, awakening. We have this melody um, that is you know like seemingly uh, you know like this haunting this haunting. Ter yeah, just pick that one. That's fine. Um, we have this haunting melody that we hear of uh, something seemingly um, awakening. Um, and that something is the protagonist uh, who has finished um, uh, gestating um, in, in like a tube 
in Oda's ears. Um, do we have the Do we have the thing here? Is that Is that the one? Well, um. No, um, no, the um, uh, the chat, just so that we can see if there's any questions. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Um, yeah. So like the protagonist is um, kind of like waking up in like this tube and uh, seeing their creator for the first time. And, you know, uh, it's very like, you know, that, that light motif should now be apparent, um, from all the way back from Promethean's lament. Um, yeah. And, um, we, we just like, you know, I figured that that was like a really fun way to end like, like a palate cleanse, but it's also going to bring us into the events of Hylix three, like where, where you start out, um, in Hylix three. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we kind of just wanted to, uh, also give you guys, um, a little something extra, uh, as to what, uh, you will hear, um, in the game. Uh, so I've completed now like seven pieces of the game, all like really, really big, like important tracks. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna play one. Um, and it's going to be the, it's going to be the one that uses this light motif. Um, it's, it's really fun. Um, we're going to play it for like, maybe we'll play it like up until the loop and then, mm -hmm. you know, I know where, where it loops. Okay. Um, so this is, um, this is just like one of the, the overworld themes, um, that you'll hear, uh, in Hylix three. Um, everybody, uh, yeah, get ready. Yeah. Uh, this piece is uh, titled The Smell of Burnt Steak.
All right. So, um, someone asked how we come up with the names of the songs. So, Mason will name a song something like Shoe. I mean, my song titles tend to be... Like yeah. working titles, yeah. I li- uh, certainly in Hilux One. Oh, there yeah. it is. Again. There it is. <laughs> um, certainly in Hilux One, and um, mm, probably th- I'm I'm a little more literal, like just the location. Jeez, oh, okay. it's 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 good. yeah. Okay, we're it, co- we're, yeah. Covering, we're covering ourselves. <laughs> um, to it's be just nine, you know the bitches. location yeah. names. <laughs> um, uh, hmm. How about do I do any? poetic uh song titles um, I, I just like you know I, i'll just come up with like whatever you know like it, it'll be like a longer name i for mean a yeah song. chuck chuck will often have some uh reference it might be something that's more like personal to him like uh right childhood uh yeah like reference. for those of you that don't know like that's a big stick is just like you know uh, obviously like oh you be careful of the things that carry your bigger carry bigger sticks than you do but like you know there was one time when, like, after a really bad windstorm, my brother Joe and I, we were, you know, given the task of, like, clean up all the sticks in the yard. And, like, we just, it devolved very quickly into us throwing sticks at each other. And, you know, the sticks just kept getting bigger. Like, and I, like I would throw this huge log and my brother would be like, that's a big stick. That's a huge stick. Gigantic stick. It's like, that's a big stick. And we would just yeah. throw these sticks. And we were, like, t- like young yeah. kids, like teenagers. Core memories. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, that's named that, you know, just like kind of honoring, um, you know, the sort of thing that you do mm-hmm. when you're an artist. And, and then uh, the smell of guessing. burnt steak here. Oh, the smell of burnt steak. Do you want to know what that is? I know. Do but, you know what But they don't is? know. Um, the smell, this song kind of was just like a really like spaced out kind of, you know, sound. And also if you, uh, you know, didn't notice there's like this kind of goofy reference to like that intro to like 2001 space odyssey it's like a it's like a big you know it's a big classical piece of classical music it's that right but like i just kind of quoted it paraphrased it um and so i was like oh yeah like space odyssey like yeah okay space and then i was just googling up like you know uh, i was searching for random facts about space and apparently the smell of space the scent of space when astronauts come in to the spaceship or like the satellite or whatever international space station after a spacewalk they uh, will often smell like burnt steak that's what space smells like the particles that are at, like out in space that latch on to the spacesuit smells like burnt steak the smell of dead grandpa yes that's fine too um yeah but you know just a really kind of goofy reference yeah. to like some real life um, shit. and we were um this is like an overworld theme so you know we're thinking about airships and spaceships yeah and just you know like just like like how are we traversing the overworld are i'm not i'm it? not saying the game's gonna have you know like ten thousand planets um <laughs> we all saw how that went <laughs> yeah yeah um, um but you know yeah we wanted to we wanted to treat people to you know like just a little something extra um we're gonna oh I, there are a couple people that i wanted to mention as well um so during the entire process of absent moon i i was uh, doing this in a shared workspace um lucille Amphibizzi was present for much of the production of this and i have to say um you know uh, uh her presence along with the presence of of monk cat who is um you know one of the uh artists on flip side as well he's like kind of you know, like the, the map guy and does a ton of ton of work on flip side. Um, you know, uh, them being there with me during, uh, you know, the the creating, writing, recording, take after take after take um, phase was really important. It's important to work with each other. Um, shared workspaces are very, very uh, valuable. If you haven't gotten into a shared workspace, it is a really good way to get um, affirmation. It's a good way to get other, um, you know, uh, get other people's minds into your ideas. Not their, not their ideas into your ideas, but just to have somebody who is there present and can give you immediate insight into what they're seeing can give you just different perspective. 
And that's really what um, they did for me when I was writing this. I mean, a lot of it was, keep going, Chuck, you can do it. It was a lot of that. But, you know, um, when I would do something particularly, like, grotesque within the music, Lucille would very often do, like, an ooh, like, that was spooky as fuck, like, you know, or something. Or, like, you know, Monk Cat would, like, in, in their very deep voice, just say like yeah oh yeah I really I really love that that was incredible thank you so much and I'm just like oh man like you know this is great like I have the best collaborators ever and it was just such a nice thing and then to pass that along to like hey this is what I made last night to Mason you know the man with the plan and just have it it was a very affirming production period for me and then to release it and have everybody, you know, like almost, seemingly almost everybody, um, just really enjoy it. Um, it means the world. Um, we're so glad to, to make this stuff and uh, to, to continue to make this stuff for, for everyone. Um, Hilux fans that are new, Hilux fans that are old, um, people that are going to discover Hilux from watching this video. Uh, for the first time. I don't know if there were people in here that were hearing this record for the first time, but we kind of wanted to do this. It's been almost a year since it's been released. It's, it's close to a year. It's like it's like the a, album, yeah. a little over 10 months since it's been released. And it just felt like the right time. We've also just been tremendously busy with with everything. Making making stuff for Hilux 3. Mason and I have started going to conventions. Yeah. Um, we're going to be at PAX East. We are. This, this next weekend, we're yeah. going to be there. We were at MAGFest at the beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah, PAX snuck up on us this yeah. next week suddenly. Um, so, we're, yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. So, if anybody's in the Boston area um, and wants Chuck to. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, for most of the day, Sunday. Um, Mason, you'll be there Friday and Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Um, it's really going to be. Um, it, it, it we we've kind of reached this new um we've been this will be our third convention that we've been to as like the hilux guys or as the hilux guy and his you know shotgunner you know um i think um you know it's it's been a, a welcome change in how we metaphorical uh, uh, shotgunner yeah yeah not like the real shotgunner like i'm, I'm riding shotgun with business i'm 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 the ride or die guy um you know it's been it's been really great the evolution of like how we interact with the fan base um seeing people like it, you guys can't see it right now but my whole wall is filled filled with hylic stuff i've got like print 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 um a pin bunch of stickers over here we've got these wayne charms here i'll do i'll do this wayne one yeah this pin's great we got all this stuff if you're the artist yeah you know like yeah. like we like please like you know support support the hilix fan artists like we it's such a robust fan base it it's yeah. it's great look at each other's work talk to each other you know have fun it's it's like we're we're having um we're out here having a, a great time and, and we'd love to see you know if people are um if people are like yeah oh yeah Pond Gorma and the yeah, fuck dude yeah, the, the, Paul, the Paul Gorman the, the Paul Gorman dude one of the funniest like things that has happened is like oh like the Paul Paul Gorman because I'm constantly doing dictation mode into my phone um yeah, you got the you got the Wayne yeah they're fighting they're <laughs> fighting now. He's like, oh wait, you're putting out all your fingers, yeah. Yeah. You're making a mobile. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's Whoa. cool. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Whoa, dude. You're bugging yeah. me. Out. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we we are just so delighted to continue to you know make these things. Um, the next steps uh, that we're taking are to just continue working on Hilux Three. Um, I, we don't, we don't really know when there's going to be like a trailer or anything, but you know, just know that like, you know, it's, it's happening, you know, these, these sorts of things are, are, you know, um, evolving yeah. and, and, uh, oh, Mason's got like a bunch of stuff that he's been working on oh, yeah. for that he wants to show too. Like there's other, there's other, Mason brought so much stuff, you brought so much stuff <laughs> yeah. to the table. Well, like there's the, stuff that's like, it just hasn't come up in the sure, discussion really. Um, no, but let, let's talk uh, about it. But like, so I, I've talked about how I've been studying a lot of different, um, 
mediums. Uh, the latest one is ceramics. Um, there's an uh, and it's it's interesting because it's still clay, but um, for like all of the previous Hilux stuff was made in modeling clay, oil clay, um, which is a uh, plasticine, which is a very different material than um, like pottery clay, um, because the pottery clay dries out and it becomes and working with it becomes a very different um, thing. You know, like it dries out and then it, it wants to crack and stuff. So you kind of gotta you have to work with it differently, and that uh, it leads me to new forms. Uh, it's it's very inspiring uh, for me. Sorry, I keep moving this thing around. I'm like, where should I put this? Um, but um, put it over Chuck. Um, <laughs> where yeah. Um, so uh, I also said like a Tyro ceramic thing I put on Twitter. I don't an oh, image of that. Oh, the real, the right real now. Tyro. Yeah, real Tyro, Tyro real. Um, and these are, these are not um, fully fired yet. So for example, this one with the pastel colors is gonna those are gonna be much deeper and glassy uh colors uh within a few weeks um it's a very slow process as well which is nice in this uh well it's, it's community, it's uh, community oh it's yeah and i wanted to say that as well it's a community studio and as chuck was saying it's like it's so nice to work in a community setting um seeing everyone else's creativity and like realizing how many like creative people are in my community um and i would like urge everyone to if you live in like a larger town or a city, check if there's a, or just a cool, a hip like village, you know, maybe there's a um, ceramic studio nearby. Uh, it's a really fun thing to get into. Or like um, an art, like an art league or something. Yeah, or yeah, yeah an art school that does ceramics. Um, yeah. It's a lot it's of cool, cool stuff around. Um, yeah. Like, um, you know, we, we're just like, I don't know. This is just like what, you know, the, the evolution yet. Yeah, there she is. She's behind yeah. us. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, stop playing on my face. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. like, I don't know. Just, just like, you know, oh, dude, you <laughs> dropping the, dropping the best one. Yeah. The best one. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah. dude, wait, wait for the chat to just like go, go nuts, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, the chat's gonna lose it. <laughs> Got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so essentially, you know, we're we're just a lot of creativity. We're happy to be, you know, like, and and someone said, like, you know, uh, in the chat before, it didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't forget it. It was like, you know, Hilux has to be some of the most creative, you know, uh, material that's out, and and like, you know. We appreciate that because it's like it's more than just a just a, a game, you know. It's like the, it, the visual art aspect has traversed so many different mediums, and now like the the game is recognized through the music. And Mason has been so like you know, gracious with yeah. with I've, sharing I've that. I've really had the privilege to work on it without um, having some of the usual like game development deadlines. Um, it's publisher it's been, yeah. stuff you know it's been fun um, it's, it's just literally been so much um, fun like yeah. that's all we have we just have like oh wow like what what fun are we going to get into this week yeah. and sometimes it gets like a little stressful because like you have expectations about things like you set personal deadlines and then like yeah. something gets in the way and you like like you feel bad about it but then it's like wait hold on you come back strong strong always yeah you know, like Mason and I, like, we'll, I'll experience, like, uh, there was, th like, this is actually hilarious. I can, I can, am I allowed to share this? Like, I was working so fast. I was working so fast on Hilux yeah. and stuff. Mason sent me, like, a really scary email. That was, like, scary up front, but, like, it wasn't that bad. It was just, like, um, pauses and moratoriums. I can find the email. It's really <laughs> was that, like, the title? Yeah, it, oh, it was the title. And I was just like, holy shit, dude. Like, why do yeah. you gotta scare me like that? He's like, I know you're really excited about Hilux 3. I am too. But you have worked really, really fast on these on these pieces. And I just don't want you to write anything that is, like, you know, getting into the, the speculative zone. Because there are things that I, you know, 
I, we, we need to flesh out together and there are yeah. things that I need to figure out about the game. And of course, like you have to be respectful of that. I was respectful of that. And then it was like, okay. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, there's like the factor that I'm like, I'm still one dude working on the game. It's, so it's true. Um, it's, it's so, true. it's not like, so it's, it's, you know, there's not a like unstoppable corporate juggernaut to keep it going. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, we're again, like we're not one of the reasons why we're so like, like on top of you know the uh, the intellectual property and on top of like talking with like I'm, I'm and super highlights. <laughs> um what one of the things that i try and do um to the best of my ability is talk with the fan base like almost at a constant i'm like unplugged for maybe one week out of the year the rest of the time i'm talking with the fans uh you know like uh, i'm in the comments section i'm i'm you know cheering on the fans with their fan art cheering on the fans with their own projects you know like i'm i'm trying to do all of that and it's just like you know like we're we're just we're just two dudes like like we 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 try and be protective of the ip but we also just try and you know be as respectful um to our fan base which is you know like mason has the best fans in the world of his work and he's been so gracious with you know like allowing me to write music for his work and it has become this thing like for for us all together to listen to this micro musical that i've written um it's it's like you know i don't want it's not like a religious blessing but it's like a blessing it's like a nice thing it's really nice to just get together and kind of like i haven't listened to this record in a long time I thought I was going to, oh, maybe I should listen to it today to get reacclimated. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to listen to it. I'll hear it when we all hear it together again. And it was just like so nice to see everybody just like still so stoked about this music. It's great. Get even more stoked because I'm, you have no idea. The music in Hilux 3 is crazy. It's cra it, it makes the music in Hilux 2 look like a choir boy. <laughs> it's like that's our Arnold Schwarzenegger reference. You're a fucking choir boy compared to me, a choir boy. Um, yeah. So it's like uh, you know we're we're gonna have a lot of fun moving forward. If you're interested in more, Jesus, it it like the choir boy <laughs> reference. Um, if you're interested in any of the stuff that we do, you can always hit me up. You can hit Mason up on the side. You can jump into um, you know some comment sections when we're you know active on Twitter. Um, there is a, a Hilux fan server that's really neat. Um, I also reside in the Flipside server. Um, that's another game that uh, me, Lucille, Monkcat, uh, Joe, Hexman, um, and Spectra have been working on for a long time. Mason has been instrumental in helping us with uh, that game in terms of like being the project grandpa, being like the consultant. If I ever have a question, I can contact Mason. He's like, I would do this and this and this. These are some pitfalls to avoid. And the only reason why that game is going to slap so fucking hard is because everybody has been super transparent with each other, especially Mason. Mason has been such a huge help in keeping us on track and keeping – like really just keeping us motivated. Like, yeah, it's going to take some time, but you guys can do it. I believe in you. The art looks great. The music sounds great. The soundtrack is awesome. The, the sound design is great. The story is even better than it was when Joe wrote it the first time and then wrote it the second time and then rewrote it the third time. You know, we're, we're just, we're having a great time making stuff for all of you and we appreciate you all so much. And thank you for hanging out with us in the stream. Do you have anything yep. else? Uh, we did say we were going to take questions. Let's take some questions. Ask questions. Only uh, if they're serious, yeah, please. Yeah, we we have no um we have no like setup for taking the questions, so we're yeah, just gonna we're just do gonna do the best we can. Um, yeah, yeah. If we don't answer them, we're still gonna witness them, and we'll so we'll be someday. We'll be uh, around. Perhaps. We'll be around on Twitter and Blue Sky and stuff yeah. always. So um you know. All um, right. Um, yeah, I'm enemy animation show a while back for um. Um, uh, I think, uh, I'm not as far as this, are the enemy animations, uh, a while back, from a while back for Hilux 3. Uh, I have been posting a lot of, um, like, battle animations, enemy animations that, uh, will end up in Hilux 3. Um, uh, influences for me, um, Pink Floyd, 
um, huge influence. Um, just a lot of stuff like Coheed and Cambria always comes out in my like. I'm a huge, I'm a huge Coheed fan. I'm a huge Wayne fan. I'm like, mm. oh, I'm like getting kind of yoked. This is cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just a huge, uh, you know, like, uh, fan of like anything and everything music. So I always try and fit in a bunch of stuff. But like Pink Floyd, um, really solid with like the kind of spacey stuff. I went through a huge Tool phase, all that. Um, I also saw someone ask about the Hilux vinyls. We can't say who we signed with, but Mason and I did sign. Uh, are we taking the beanies off? They, now? they called me out. They said I was dressed like a minion. Oh shit! Yeah, like sick, oh my sick god, burn. Um, yeah, sick burn, dog. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> do you want me to get you some ice for that burn? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Hilux vinyl. Um, we Mason's gotta just like you're you're working on the art for it. Uh yes. Yeah yeah. Um the we we signed a deal with some folks and yeah. You know, like the vinyl is like all all but ready to like go. Um, uh, Gibby Gibby Dog, uh, not Gib not Gibby Dog. Gibby Dog, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, have you heard of uh? No, I've never heard of that. Hilux inspired. Um, wait, go go back up. When we're Chuck, what genres inspired you for the Absent Moon tracks? Oh, um, just like like a a ton of stuff. Like you know, I that I guess you could say that like for me it was like more about like breaking the concept of like what the american like broadway musical is you know like i was trying to write like something that sounded like a, apropos to like you know or not apropos like something that sounded adjacent to the modern day musical theater production while also like not selling out and sounding like hylix yep 1024 beanies mm. should be the only official merch <laughs> dude huh. we could do 1024 beanies and like just have like a bunch of people Walking around with 1024 p.m. beanies. Hmm. That would be funny as fuck, actually. That would be really funny if, like, we, that was it. Just mm -hmm. 1024 beanies. Yeah. Um, can you pet Gibby Dog? Will you be able um, to pet Gibby Dog? There will be, you'll be able to, there will be an interaction. I don't know there that it'll don't. be petting. Um, this is a good question, too. Will Fleeman and Star come back? You can, you can probably attempt to pet Gibby Dog. Yeah, if, if we don't answer that, will Fleeman and Star come back? Um, can no, we, can we talk about that? I think it's yeah, a they're no. dead. They're, <laughs> they're dead. dead. They're, yeah. yeah, they they're they, so um, dead. they died the way they lived. Uh, they didn't. Um, or, <laughs> oh, or at in, least in, in they they died the way they lived in theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. They're dead as fuck. <laughs> God, dude, they are dead. <laughs> they're dead as. Shit. Shit, uh, new villain um i kind of like this one as a surreal artist is there a limit to how abstract something should get in oh. your opinion um, good question yeah really that is a, question. that's an interesting question um surrealism is such a huge it like encompasses so much stuff now um i find myself kind of setting like rules uh if if I'm doing, let's say, a surreal drawing per se, I'll kind of start with some parameters and then work within those. Um, is there? Uh, I mean, there's you know, there's no limit uh, to how abstract it can get. Um, uh, you know, but you know, you'll pass a certain point, and then maybe your viewers will just see it as abstraction and no longer surrealism. The, I mean, these terms, they only they have they're kind of approximations uh, because, you know, visual art isn't verbal art. It's, you know. Um... Um, someone said, will Hilux 3 be taking place after Absent Moon or will we get to see some yeah. other stuff? Um, yeah, it'll it's... take place uh, for the most part after Absent Moon. Uh, some of the um, events in Absent Moon will appear in Hilux 3. Yeah. there, There's like a, like, like, Imagine Hylix uh, or Absent Moon being like the most direct bridge um, to Hylix 3 from Hylix 2. It's like the bridge that allows us to see the storylines of Samsnosa, um, you know, Odazir, uh, Wayne, Data Small and Pond Gorma, you know, um, Claudia and Clawman. Like, you know, it, it allows us to see those characters and the, the protagonist um, get, get like allows us to see that story unfold um the name of the new protagonist uh i don't know uh yeah um i mean i've got a working name in my head but i'm not 
Uh, I'm not, it's, it's not ready. <laughs> we're not serious. Yeah, I had, I had a name that came to me in a, in a dream again, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm like working out the the Mason's, transliteration. Mason's going to tell me Yeah. after... I've only got like I've got like the and long no, like I've else. got like the end name, but yeah. you know I still need to yeah, yeah. <laughs> to call get the short call, call him Bor- the Hobbit version. Bor- 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 mm, I don't know what that means. I don't know so what that gonna... is. Yeah, it's probably something deeply offensive. Yeah. Um. Uh, who's the squash guy on Twitter? Oh, that's uh, <laughs> that's um, who is the squash guy? The squash guy. Do you mean when I have the? The squash. Is that you though, or is that the squash guy? Yeah, that squash guy who shows up in my apartment. Yeah, yeah. at night. Yeah, it's Both, only yeah. it's only when you take too much Zyrtec yeah. that the squash man shows yeah. up. Don't don't do that. Don't don't take, t- don't take too much Zyrtec. Don't do um, it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the it, worst actually. letter probably C. Um, it's so redundant. Um, <laughs> What? Uh, oh yeah, letter? sorry, Chuck. Oh my god! Are we, are we just answering the throwaway questions and yeah? I mean, no, the, it's cool. Will the there be other dread knights that appear in the future? Or was Pongorman the last of them? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe Pongorma has some, like, maybe, like, there's some, like, deep, like, Pongorma followers or, like, you know, some, something, I don't know. There's, it's hard to tell. Like, we're, we're still, like, because the other thing that's been cool is, like, I'll have an idea and I'll throw it to Mason and it'll be like, oh, cool, Chuck is the biggest sea hater out there. I hate seas. Everybody, everybody knows all my homies hate seas. Um... Please make an art book for all the concept art. I mean, like, it's possible to do. You know, it's just like it's like money. <laughs> you know, like mm. making an art book. Um, but it looks like people want it. Does Grandpa have a grandchild? Uh, Peepaw is. Uh, nah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about any of that shit. Hmm. Um. Will there be new sages? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there will be a new. Of course, there's hell yeah. But why? Why wouldn't there be? Um, uh, let's see. The cone cultists will return. There will be some some retcons for them. Uh, yeah. So that they don't. Have... So that their lore isn't just like a. Um, yeah. So it, so it's good and yeah, not bad. Um, <laughs> could Pongorma resurrect in the afterlife, or is he? Pro- well, um, so. We had mentioned before that there's like a there's like a problem with the afterlife. We don't know what it is. We know what it is, but but the the community does not know what it is. Mm. Um, it's a it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. That's also part of um, Odazir, um and some of the other like villainous characters. Uh, o- uh, um, Odazir, he'll have more of a a place in society because he's uh, he's able to kind of reconstitute himself or others independently of the afterlife beach world um thing thing yeah yeah some of his mystical knowledge will pertain to that mystical so people will have to put up with uh his shenanigans because uh they need his his knowledge um is every character in hylix queer please say it's canon um we made the we made like the statement that like you know most of the Hylix characters were ace like yeah. unintentionally. I mean, I guess like I don't, I don't know. know I don't know that I'm ready to to make a, to a, make, yeah, a blanket like, declaration. <laughs> uh, they're all yeah. No, we don't. Yeah, we're we're kind of just you like know, you know is oh. like is I don't know is is Super Mario queer you know it's like a similar super, question. You know? Super yeah. <laughs> um, what happened to Wayne House? Um, well. Uh, Wayne Super, never Super came... Mario is just my go-to. Like, yeah, Wayne... it, it, uh, uh, stand in for like video games in general, I guess. Wayne uh, never came home, and uh, you know, essentially, the Hylix to like Wayne not coming home can be boiled down to that's what happens when you leave a potato in the microwave. You know, just some crazy shit started happening at Wayne House, and that is that's where we're at. You know, Wayne House just kind of went a little, uh, a little. Cuckoo bananas. 
Hmm. Super Gay Rio. Nice. Good job. Super Mario. Good. Um, yeah, they're just all neutral. Um, uh, what is... Wait, there's more. Um, someone's asking about a port. Um, yeah, ports are really tough. Like, they're really tough. Just in general. Like, people have been asking for a Switch yeah, port. Yeah, the, uh, the Switch port of Hilux 2. Uh, I've said this in the past. It's not possible it's, yeah. from a technical... Well, it's not feasible because the um, I didn't pay attention to some memory limitations when working with uh, when working on Hilux two, um, and you got to be more careful with that stuff for the console port. Any new type of gameplay that you did with platform that um, show up in Hilux three? There's no uh, no plan um, for the how for the platforming to return. Um, we'll see. Uh, Hilux one soundtrack. Uh, if it's ever going to come out on streaming. Yeah, um, that could happen. Um, there, there was just some technical stuff. The Hilux 1 soundtrack only exists in lo-fi, like 128 kilobytes yeah, it's, per second. It's, it's tough. Because um, I, I just didn't see it. I didn't imagine it would take off like it has. So, um, yeah. you know, uh, it was very much like a um, no-money production. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, those those tracks are like heavily mulched from uh, lo-fi sources. Um, did um, do old Wayne and Wayne Prime share the same thoughts and memories? Um, so we addressed it earlier that um, you know it's not like typical hive mind. Like there, like there, you were saying before. I think the the best word for it is like instinct. Like hmm. Wayne, a Wayne is brought into the world with a specific set of learned skills and instincts yeah. but each wayne is kind of like you know and and you know capable of independent thought um yeah and individualism. Um, it's, a, it's a question i'll have to resolve a little more uh we were talking about the, the wayne consciousness uh lead uh chuck and i leading up to this uh lore talk um but the old wayne versus wayne prime distinction uh remains unclarified uh, um yeah do you have an idea if hilux 3 will be more open world than hilux 2 uh yeah um i i that i hope so um i played i played through um i think um uh, ultima 4 um uh w like an early open world game um and uh so i might try to i was i'm hoping to kind of lift that um world design um so it could be you know open world but still at a scope that a solo developer could make um also some of the um like spider web software games that kind of open world um, um what does that mean uh it's like you could still you could you can visit a lot of the locations in the world but there's not going to be so much a lot of like instancing um not like not an ultra not an extremely like reactive um open world because you know that would be an insane scope for the game um, um but i i do love the um the feeling of like getting lost in an open world um yeah, yeah. Like, like like finding like all the npcs yeah, and what yeah. they have to say is super fun yeah um i really like um like the uh ocarina of time method where it's like a big like open space and then like all of like like the other places that you can interact with are like breakout rooms basically yeah, yeah the um yeah. and uh, the game design overall is much more um i I've, I've done a lot of planning this time uh, so it's going to be more coherent um, um so we'll ha uh we've got like um will wayne design. have a gun with bullets in hilux 3 uh <sighs> probably not um will the combat of hilux 3 take heavy deviations from what we're used to hmm. um, um i think uh probably uh there will probably like there will be some wrinkles. It's not going to be a. I mean, it's not going to be a reinvention of RPG combat. Yeah, um, it's, it it'll just be cooler shit. Like that's yeah, a good that's um, a good way to describe it. Just yeah. cooler stuff. Um. Uh, Hilux one tenth anniversary will have something special. Uh, question mark. No, <laughs> I hadn't planned for anything. Is um, that this year? I don't know. Is it? It's. Uh, it'll be next year because okay. this one came out in two thousand fifteen, hmm. um, which is bananas. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll have the uh, the paper cup glitch patched out. 
Oh, yo, dude, official Hilux One Paper Cup merch sold in a bundle with 1024 p.m. beanies. Wow. That might be fucking serious. Yeah. Uh, uh, does Wayne uh, like does Wayne like Gustavo Cerati's music? I don't, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Uh, um, what character do I enjoy designing the most? Um, I enjoy designing the like Oda's ears. Uh, His like W pro- head. progeny uh, character Oda's ears daughter that like uh, just riffing on that um, head design um, and um, doing the like and like the romper jumpsuit flip-flops uh it was just a fun design um, that's crazy so that kind of ended up being like that's why it's the the new protagonist um uh yeah just fun to draw playable um, characters will you just be sticking with the uh with um, the style of four um yeah we'll see the um the hope is that there will be some swappable party members mm. uh i do have a bunch of characters I'm hoping to bring into the party. Uh, um, Small Dunday and Dennis Small, like how are they related? You know, like are there older people in hmm. Dennis Small's, you know, clique or whatever? I I would just assume. You know what I like? I so okay. This is what I really like about Dennis Small. I've been growing and um, cloning the same, the same spider plant mm-hmm. since 1994. Yeah. Propagating it. Yeah. Since 1994, mm. I've I have clones of a spider plant from 30 years ago. Yeah, and I think that's so cool. And I just kind of like in my mind, I always just think that that's like what Dennis Mull is doing, just yeah. like propagating, and like you know upgrading, you know, survival of the fittest. Like this bulb, this bulb eventually dies, but like it made like a hundred other bulbs. So it could be that like there's like one really formidable Dennis Small walking around, but maybe like only like the best, you know, bulbs or whatever, mm. or like little worm creatures that are living in its head. Yeah, you know, turn into like you know walking, mm. walking, breathing, living things. Yeah. Um. Um. Let's see, Kaim is asking: Is there going? Will there be a return of Hylix One environments? Uh, since I've done um. Uh, Hylix one enemy like recre- I've done some recreations of the animations there. Um, uh, I I, mean, I don't know if the locations would return verbatim. Um, I'll be revisiting some of the motifs for sure. Um, I think I was more explicitly like there was a time when I was hoping to re like remake Hylix one um but you know there's only so much time in my life so i yeah. decided i would put that energy towards Hylix three after all um um i did a, a lot of is, is uh, dennis mall arm or something that grew on them um, um that's an interesting question um no um dennis mall is kind of a dandy hmm <laughs> Dennis yeah. Mall likes to accessorize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That pink, like, you know, like, you know, conquistador shit always tickled me. I was just like, look at this distinguished gentleman. Mm. Or gentle person. Gentle yeah. thing. Um, any game character designer um, admire such as uh, Akihiko Yoshida. Ke- Yo, Kev Bayless. Yo. Hmm. I've been checking out Kev Bayless and David Wise's streams recently. Um, and cause I've been working, um, I mean, I don't know if Alzanda is going to see this, but if you see me interacting with a person named Alzanda on Twitter, um, Alzanda is an amazing artist. Um, he does like some really, really cool, like Metal Gear Solid style stuff. Just trying to, trying to plug him wherever. Um, he mentioned my work to David Wise and then like all of a sudden I just like woke up one day and like David Wise was just like following me on Twitter. I'm like, what the fuck is this about? I need to know. And then I checked out like their stream, like Kev Bayless and David Wise and like some other folks like talking about like, you know, they're getting ready to like do this thing in Arizona and like, you know, do this, this convention out there. And I got a chance to ask them some questions and it was just like, so magnificent so for for me like david wise kev kev bayless is more visual and stuff but like yeah 
those uh those guys like they're around like they're kind of like they're within like our realm of like can we contact these people and talk with them possibly and the answer is yes we can it's kind of cool i don't know if you do you like kev bayless's stuff i don't know it he's like uh it's like donkey kong like oh 3D, yeah yeah like yeah. how can you not like yeah the 3D, I, love, I love that stuff the 3d stuff from like you know the early 90s yeah like, um oh he also did uh killer instinct mm-hmm yeah, like, yeah, like nice. all that stuff. Yeah, um, cool. I don't know if there's a I'm, uh, character designers I admire. Um, yes to Hilux 2 physical releases. They're coming. Hmm. Um, you mean the vinyl release? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah um, it's coming. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know if I have specific like, names of people. There are, there are certain like, games where it's like I'll um, especially admire the... Um, Character designs, enemy designs. Um, Shin Megami Tensei Five was it the one on the Switch? Was recently. that the Was that the blue? The, yeah, like, the with, blue the, with the with yeah. the not a with the blue uh the blue man person. Um, or, yeah, yeah. Um, that had especially beautiful enemy designs and designs working like in harmony with the their animations. Like they had kind of thought through uh, modeling the the monsters how they're going to animate uh, um the designs are beautiful to look at um this is a question that comes up all the time that i think oh, we should sorry, answer um uh name hylix related uh or um, contrast the word psychic yeah so how do, um how do you see it the name uh hylix um i think I, I answered this like in a stream like five years ago um when <laughs> like hylix 2 was coming out yeah yeah when we were dropping the hylix 2 release date um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think making Hylix one. Um, I was thinking. I was excited at the time um, about like automation, some of the random text uh, ideas pertaining to that. So Hylix um, was more um, in the sense of automatons, uh, these kind of thoughtless beings or or in the hylix lore now the uh the beeling the, the beelings the beings uh yeah I'm, I'm getting affected by it too the the spell of absurdity just talking nonsense yeah. Yeah, um yeah. nonsensical beings um and the, the, so um and in that kind of hierarchy of hylix being uh and then psychics being this like higher plane of thought and uh then pneumatics you know the highest <laughs> plane of uh, spiritual thought um not that the game and the game is you know it's not like explicitly uh or it's not it's not like narcissism and it's not um really more deeply getting into um like gnosticism or spiritual ideas that um use those terms uh but yeah i mean the, the term psychic has been so uh lifted <laughs> for all kinds of fiction and i'm kind of i'm using hylix in the Similar in way. a similar way as uh, psychics has been um thoroughly mulched by popular culture um what else we got oh we missed so much yeah we, we missed played so geometry much. dash um my student showed it to me once and i like probably fell asleep yeah um is the next hylix game going to be called hylix 3 or will it be a different title um probably um hylix 3 yeah yeah that's yeah, for fine. sure. That's that's a good thing. Is the ocean in Hylix a more solid mass? Um, are you asking if it's like a non-Newtonian solid? The ocean. Why would it? The the hylum. The hylum. The um, pink. The pink stuff. Yeah. Is it like Pepto Bismol. Yeah. Um. They should hire us. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll find out what the. We'll find out what, what it, it is. Like. Yeah. Yeah. There will. Um, yeah. It'll be changed. Favorite um, Hylix YouTuber now. Um. Oh. Like, I have a favorite Hylix YouTuber, actually. Hmm. I have two. Hmm. I can't decide. I have three, actually. Wow. There's three Hylix YouTubers that I that yeah. have covered our games that are just, like, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, okay, first one, who I absolutely love, Nitro Rad, James. Yeah. He has given us rave reviews uh for hylix 2 and he even gave Hil- he gave hylix 1 a rave review too that was like one of the things that really helped mason in the beginning and then of course obviously Vinny over at vine sauce yep. um is unbelievable yep. um he's also like incredibly um supportive of, yeah. of the brand and then awesome. like i don't awesome know dude. i i really like watching watching that kaiser kid down mm. in uh in in chile hmm. yeah kaiser if you're watching yeah yeah kaiser's kaiser's got some 
cool as shit. Yeah, it's like awesome. Um, yeah, Vinny's great. Yeah, everyone um, who covers the music too. Is, uh, yeah, any anyone who just like talks about like the game at all, like I'm just in the comments section. Like, <laughs> like thank you so much. You're awesome. Um. Oh, and wait, hold on. We have to mention Harry. Yeah. Harry's been coming out with like these incredible lore predictions. Lore predictions. Mm. How could I have forgotten? And S is for Sprinkles, who's like oh my God. The, the fucking the, like uh, historian yeah. and like you know like just like the way. Have you read the wiki? Uh, it's like unbelievable. It's, it's, it's good now. It's yeah. like really good. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Like you guys are. Yeah. Like there, there are so many people. Yeah, I every time a, a Harry but Harry video uh, drops, I'm yeah. just like, yo, what the? F- uh, like- I, I I confess I haven't watched Harry's videos because I'm. Uh, it's like I gotta. Oh, I. It's, have. it's yeah. gonna like confuse my lore. Yeah, yeah. writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so deep, and there were some times where I'm just like, this motherfucker's gonna get it. He's gonna mm. get. It. He's gonna understand. Yeah. yeah. Before anything comes out. Yeah, I mean that's please. that's fine. You know. Um, that's good. Oh yeah, yes, buddy, buddy. I'm sorry that I that I did that. Yeah, <laughs> um, like um, so. Listen, there. So the other thing that I want to say is this, and this is such an this, like it's it's a good thing to kind of like just bring up towards the end because like we got a lot of stuff out there, and I didn't want to like bring up anything like soul crushing or anything. What happens in fan fiction is totally fine. It's totally cool. Fan fiction exists. For a good reason. People are allowed to express themselves in whatever way they want. As long as we understand that the way that they are expressing themselves within the fan fiction is fan fiction. Now, that being said, the stuff that we shared tonight when we talked about it was definitive. It was like, this is this is what the story is. This is like the interpretation of the story. This is, this is where we're going with it. This is what Mason allowed me to write. This is what was greenlit. This is what Mason's thinking. This is what I'm thinking. And that, and some of those answers are like, we don't know yet. We're going to find out. But a lot of stuff that we went over is like, this is what is happening in the song. This is what I meant by this. The blue door means that it's a blue door, that type of thing. Mm. Um, I if, mean, I mean, the fan in this. Yeah. Awesome. The fa- the um, fan, the, it's it's the, more like the, the concern for me is like, I, I work pretty slow. The yeah. internet moves super fast, so sometimes the fandom like gets ahead, or yeah. or it's in um you know it's just like we just don't want some anybody expansive to feel... story, and then it's like if I'm not like bringing that into the final product, um exactly you know we just don't want anyone to feel like you know we're not listening or that we're not like so our our thing too is like you know the only the only bullshit that we should be beholden to is our own bullshit. You know, like, yeah. we, like we need to be making these things and exercising our freedom as artists in order to bring you the most, the, the, the highest potency art that we can bring you. And if like something doesn't mm-hmm. happen within the story that like doesn't yeah. line up with your thing, like you got to chill. Yeah. Like, um, you gotta yeah chill. But uh, you know, yeah. the, the, um, the fans are awesome. Yeah, uh, I did uh, also in terms of like fan merchandise, um, I did, there's like a Twitter, I've got a Twitter post laying yes. out like a policy for that. Um, I don't mention it there, but um, uh, I'm currently not charging any licensing fee. So it's like, you know, it's like a thank you to all the awesome yeah. fan artists. Uh, but And um, also, you know, uh, I've got a few emails to answer. <laughs> I, get, I have so many emails to yeah. answer. Uh, but, you know, you just have to email me um, so I can approve of the fan right. merch like, sales. Um, if there's anything like, you know, like, so it's different when it's visual stuff and when it's like you can buy physical stuff. Like, we're almost right off the bat when we were, when we were like, Hilux 2 came out and we started seeing like covers of songs. And I was like, oh, okay. yeah, that's cool. And it's like, it's, I guess it's like a little bit different with music because it's not like an interactive thing. It's like, a, like you're experiencing it. It's like a passive experience. Mm. Um, but like, you know, there are some people like, I love the Hilux fan music, Man Link, Enemy Ghost, and like, those are the two big ones that I think anybody that's made anything that like, they can say like, oh yeah, I'm really inspired by the Hilux music, whether it's your pieces or my pieces. It's such a, like, that like, it's such a, a, a gift to receive, you know, like, wow, 
you went out of your way to make this thing and try and sound like this intellectual property, that's like the, the most flattering thing ever as a musician. That somebody took the time to listen to your work enough to like try and lift some influence out of it. That's like how you know you 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 know you, you kind of made it in in a in a way. Not in like oh yeah and you know like I'm yeah it's just like I'm I'm feeling dignified now. It's just like it all all I can say and you know all we can say is thank you. You know when we, when we're we're at that point we can say thank you. Man Link's instar theme. Yeah, for real. That instar theme is like sick as fuck. That's mm. awesome. I love this question. Please tell us about the unloaded gun. What's the unloaded gun? Well, like the the gun with no bullets that Wayne has in Hilux One. Oh, the, is yeah. it is it like the um? I don't know where that those bullets went, but that is a that is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just acknowledging it's a good question. I don't have an answer. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Why does Dedis have? Someday a, we'll learn. Why does Dedis have a butch head? What does that um, mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means, but the answer could probably be because. Um, Carsoro? The, um, uh, Odazir's, like, armored, uh, oh, the, bodyguard. The, the homunculus? Yeah. That turns into, like, a little yeah. brain what, fucker? Um, what's up with Carsoro? Um, will they return? Um, hmm. I guess they have to return now. It's been called out. Um, hmm. Good. Yeah, uh, there were no plans for it, but uh, that was such a fun design to do. The uh, like multi-stage enemy. Um, I love. I love how he like teeters like yeah. a dresser. Yeah, with a big yeah. chest of yeah. drawers. I might have to revisit that. <laughs> yeah. Um, that that was yeah, that was a really fun design to do. That our, like our com- ramen guy covered with armor. Are computers sentient in the world of Hylix? Um, uh, uh, it's technology. Hmm. Hmm. Are cars living beings, just like in that movie? Uh, the cars. Pixar one? Yeah. Um, Are they real? I, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, is Blearall okay after Hylix 2? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Blearall's, Blearall's doing awesome. Blearall's got some political aspirations, yeah, right? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 He's politicking. Yeah, he's a, he's a big wheel. He's a politicking time bomb. Yeah. What he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pongorma's fur, first. So, um, People are asking about like we we just have to say like Pongorma is wearing a um, clothing that allows for the buildup of static electricity, which allows him to create the lightning bolt. Mm. That's like that's like the thing. That was the design that Mason yeah. was, was you know, yeah going for. yeah. I've, and I've got some uh, some like cloak concepts. Uh, you know, he'll have some he'll have some some cool outfit uh, <laughs> for for his final moment do, do we exist in the hylix universe um so um uh we don't exist in the hylix universe but i'll tell you Oops, what um you might you might find me um you might find me somewhere in the flip side universe you might even find mason a little like somewhere in the, oh yeah in the a develop, little a little piece of a, a little piece of mason in the flip yeah. side universe yeah. too um yeah the pimp coat dude uh, yeah, yeah dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got like a yeah it's like a wwe entrance coat yeah dude <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yo. Um, yeah, he's so drippy, dude. He's great. Yeah. Um, can't physically summon the lightning bolts. Um, yeah, it's part of it. What is happening? What the fuck? <laughs> it's this. It's, it's this. It's bullshit. Yeah. Um, can it do can it do peace? It can do peace. Yeah, watch. It's going to be like confetti or balloons. It's not happening. Wait. We're just not joyful enough. This bullshit. Yeah, 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 I'm pissed. Um, so yeah, um, and here comes here he comes with the with the uh, steel chair. Yeah, spec. Hey, um, so yeah, essentially, um, I know where Chuck's gonna be in the flip side. Yeah, I'm obviously gonna be like at like you know the one place on the flip side that serves like sushi. You know, that's like my spot. Um, yeah, I think um, you know we're we're. We're about ready to play some some video games and chill. Yeah. Um, this has been an amazing stream, and uh, I wanted to say thank you again uh, to Salem. 
Mason also probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank, yeah. Thank you very much. Salem, yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's um, what it, what's the what's and the, moderating um, the it's chat. It's a it's a asterium. Asterium. Yeah. In the chat. Um. Shout out. So keep an eye out for their work. Um. Yep. You know, in general, just like like be supportive of their work. Be to anybody that we mentioned, and including yourselves. Like, just be supportive of each other. Like, if you see yeah. some cool Hylix art, just yeah. like like it, because like the best thing to do for any fandom like is just to yeah. like consistently be supporting each other. Like we, the best way that we can support you guys is by getting into the comment sections and liking yeah. your work, just like you yeah. have gotten our game and played it. You know, yeah, I like think this that. is like this is important uh, as an artist, and especially I think for, like, I went through it as a young artist. You can like you can it's easy to get in like, get kind of arrogant about um your own yeah, art, it's... like that your own art is kind of the only art that matters. But um, uh, there are so many creative people around you, skilled yeah. people. It, it, um, the spirit of collaboration is like like you'll get to a point where you realize that like this is this is it. The spirit, like the, the the collaboration, is where it's at, and it's just it's not that you can't like you do can't your yeah own I mean stuff too for know? sure but like you know like being supportive of each yeah. other is all like you're you can never lose if you're supportive of each other yeah. you can never lose, um, and so with that um, you know thank you all so much, um, we are going to archive the stream stream is gonna you know you'll be able to watch it you'll be able to re-listen to everything check out the commentary let people know um if they missed it where they can find it um if you'd all be so kind to to share around and if anybody has any questions like don't be afraid to yeah to we, at uh, us or whatever like we're around yeah we yeah. uh we, we you know we missed so many questions. Uh, yeah we but, did yeah um, you could just send us send us we'll, uh, we'll make an effort to do a yeah uh some kind of like twitter on yeah twitter or yeah or or the yeah x yeah no. man either I, yeah does anybody else just really want the app like we'll wake up one morning and we'll be like i'm gonna go check yeah, my twitter yeah, maybe, and then it yeah, just disappears you know, we'll do it we're yeah. doing it on blue sky yeah we there. should do, i just <laughs> really i really just want it to be done i want it to just like implode we'll do it on tumblr yeah yeah <laughs> now there's an idea there's a party yeah um Thank you all so much. We hope you guys. We'll do it on. We'll do it on Hilux dot com. Yeah, Hilux dot. You. you I still over. own that. It's oh, you still own <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not Jover. Yeah, um, I, I had to own. I had to buy that so that um someone wouldn't like. Camp. Uh, yeah, like squat you on it and to, post yeah. something horrible there. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, do you still answer questions on Tumblr? Yeah, we're still kind of like floating around on Tumblr. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. I'll do some Tumblr posts um, yeah. next time I'm posting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how it's gonna we, happen. do we. I, it's got to be only the really like best stuff goes on the Tumblr. <laughs> the question now is how, where do we stop recording? Do we stop recording in OBS or do we stop recording in? Uh, I think I think Chuck is saying that the stream is pretty much over. Like, yeah, we're, we're just, just we're just, just trying, trying to, figure to figure out, out how to get out button yeah. to press so it doesn't all get erased. Um, <laughs> Hold on, let me let me ask. How do we how do we do this? Yeah, <laughs> Good how, night, everyone. How the how the fuck do we? Yeah, do we're, this? we're 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 winding down. Um, um, hold on one second. Let me let me uh, let me check the. Um, <laughs> how do we leave? How do we leave? <laughs> How do we Let us leave, leave without um, you? Hmm. Um. Hit the stop streaming button. Um. Okay. On the oh, on OBS. Okay. Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a everyone. good night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For, or good uh, morning, wherever you are, and we'll see. You, in, we'll and... see you all on the internet somewhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Peace. Peace. Wait. Yes! <laughs>